Yo guys, welcome to the FYI podcast. I'm Nick. I'm here at the, the lovely Mimi. Hi guys. Today we got a legend on set. Oh, thank you, man. Of course. Yeah, actually you see, like, when people call you legend, yeah? Mm-hmm. Does that mean you're dead? Like, does that no, mean you're no, not no, lit? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Do you know what? Isn't that Mark? Because you know when, 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 <laughs> <laughs> there was a year, yeah, when, like, I suppose, like, some mutes were allowed outside, yeah? <laughs> After <laughs> pandemic, yeah? Bear you started coming up to me and said, Ra, what well, go on, you're a legend. But I'm looking at them, I'm like, you look like the same age as me, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it just legend. means like you're one of the first, like I call Soldier Boy a legend. Yeah, no, no, no. I get like, it, I get it. To... I get it. But it's like there was a period I didn't like it at all, bro. Oh, the the word legend. No, what, the word I was like, what does that mean? Like, I'm, does that mean I'm done? Like, do you, no. like do you know what it is? I think it's because you're a hard worker. Like you don't wanna you don't want the the GOAT status yet. You wanna keep nah, you wanna man. You have to stay hungry. Yeah, Remember, I told you, yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. pretend you're starving. You don't feel like you've earned a gold status yet. You have to go back, yeah, to living on a council estate in a two bed with like five people. <laughs> you know, one of those. The I, illusion. In my illusion. head, it's 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 of, in my head, I feel like I'm still there, but I'm not. Like, it's the illusion of bare rooms. <laughs> you got to create like an illusion of poverty when you're rich. Like you, you have to force yourself. You have to, to stay go. hungry. Yeah. You have to stay hungry. And so, like when people I'm a, say I'm a legend, it's like, nah, I've not even started yet. Okay. Right, fair play, fair I like that. Does that keep you grounded, like mentally? Because you know, there's like a lot of um, creatives that go through a phase of like not knowing where they're going to go next because like you said they're at a stage where they're comfortable and then you hear that they fall into a stage of depression or whatever do you think is that what keep like is that do you know what it is there was one day i decided yeah i was going to treat this like a job so Mm -hmm. every day i'm going to work and that was what changed everything so i treat what i do like i go to a nine to five even if i'm not doing nine to five hours i treat it like that because At the end of the day is work like you know it's it's not i don't do this i'm not doing this for fame i'm not doing this for i'm doing this number one because i love it and i'm lucky enough to be able to do what i love like funny enough like i was at church earlier like i was saying and my pastor was talking about work and like he said like the mistake society's made is that people are mistaking um jobs for work like there's there's value to be added even if you don't have a job like there's work to be done like yeah. do you get what i'm saying like yeah. there's work you could do on yourself there's work you could do for your family and all of that stuff and then also like you know he took it he was talking about a, a chapter it was like in the book of timothy i think it was chapter five and there's a verse he said i've never prayed it in my life he said like you basically it's certain about like you you can't be blessed unless you look after your family oh it's something mad like it's not that let me not misquote the bible yeah but it's something about like your responsibility is to look after your immediate family i'd never seen that before in the bible i was like raw that's mad yeah. like and literally for me that's my responsibility is to look after my family and my extended family the best i can and then outside of that my friends like you know where i can to bless them as well and so i feel there's that element and then there's also the element of like you know I just haven't even done, I've not even peaked like the 5% of the ideas I've got in my brains yet. Like, so it's like, when people are like, you're a legend, I'm like, raw, what, for doing what? Kid older than that. I was 19, I was a youth man. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was 17 when I done kid older. Yeah. I didn't know, I wasn't even an adult. Yeah. When I done kid older, I wasn't an adult. There were certain things I couldn't legally do. I couldn't drink alcohol. <laughs> like. <laughs> so how did that opportunity for you actually come about? Like being in adulthood because obviously you said you were studying and mm. what you were studying is completely different to obviously kid adulthood you yeah. studying no kid adulthood times i was i was doing i was doing college i was okay. doing a levels so yeah. i was doing english english history re and drama that's what i was doing and mm-hmm. then i went to an open audition at my college and then i had to do loads and loads of auditions and eventually i got the part okay so and i did it in my final year of my a levels and then I did adulthood in my final year of my degree when I was doing law. Sick. Yeah, man. So when you have... Okay, so like, did you feel like after you shot those films that you'd have to go and work, like, was working in law ever yeah, something I wanted that to surfaced do law, though. in your... Yeah, I wanted to do law. It wasn't like I was forced to do it. Like, people yeah. always think, like, I was an A student. I was smart. <laughs> smart kids 
go to uni. uni. It's yeah. true. And they go to good ones. Yeah. Like, I wasn't like, the thing is, the thing is, I always like to say, I'm not even, it's not like I'm trying to show off here. Yeah? Mm-hmm. We need to normalize, yeah, people from the hood being Be smart, smart, going uni, doing all of this. Because man was that you. Like, but I was on ends though. I was still, f- ask anyone that went to school with me. I had fights every day. <laughs> <laughs> I was on, like, I, everyone that was in my year, year below, like, ask them. Like, there's bare people in the industry went to my school. So you Dappy was on, on job school. smart. You know, here. Dappy went to my school. <laughs> like, my school was mad random, bro. Like, I know Dappy from when we're year seven. Yeah. Like, 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 there's people like Daniel Kaluuya went to my school, Slider Cots went to my school. Like, so, like, I, I forget, like, Tom, Tom, what's it, Mallet? Yeah. He went to my school. I didn't even realize, like, someone was ban- bantering him the other day, yeah. said something about our school. I said, right, you went to my school. Like, I didn't even... <laughs> Crazy. So, like, for me, like, I was a smart kid in school, but I was still on the stuff that everyone else was on. Mm-hmm. Like, I was, I was selling sweets and chocolate, CDs. Like when CDs were a thing, like yeah. I was I was on DVDs. everything. I was fighting. I was like I was on everything, but I was still getting good grades because for me it didn't make sense. I was competitive. It didn't make sense to compete at the classroom and not win. Yeah, that's a very good mentality to have, from Yeah, I'm mad saying. competitive. Yeah. Listen, sometimes me and my missus race. We race each other. I want to smoke her, bro. <laughs> like, do you get what I'm saying? You don't let her win. You don't like, let her win. My, no. youths, <laughs> okay. my youths, I race my kids. I smoke them. I said, we'll stop running when you beat me. Yeah. Like, I'm not on, like, I'm not on losing. I'm not on losing <laughs> nothing. And like, obviously, like, you know, like, you have to be grateful. Like, my mom was very strict and like, yeah. she prayed very prayerful and all of that stuff and supported me because I reckon if my mom weren't on like, job like that, I would have just done anything. Cause my mom was on job, but she yeah. was never putting pressure on me to study. She was putting pressure on me to she behave well. Behave yourself. <laughs> oh, okay. You know but, what that, I'm but that comes in with the grades though. If you come in with a with a F or a D, but no, that's not behaving well. No, but I was getting A's and being bad. Bad, yeah. Oh, okay. So he was getting A's and smacking people up. That's what he was doing. Oh, I was getting okay. A's and being bad. And my mom was getting phone calls to say your son's had another fight. Or your son's this. Like, imagine that. You're you're a you're a Franklin Saint. Yeah, so I was being <laughs> bad, bro. I was being like it was a bit mad. So I was yeah. a bad you, but I was good at the same time. So imagine like, so my mom's struggle was like, why are you not behaving? I don't understand. What's yeah, wrong? yeah, you're doing the other thing, right? Why are you not doing What's this? What's wrong like? with you? And so for me it was like, you know, in school I was I was I was that child. So I was always gonna go to uni, I was always gonna study law. I remember like the reason I decided I wanted to do law, I remember like one of my friends' dads, like he said to me one time, he goes, um, what do you want to be when I stayed over at their house? My mom traveled and like these guys were like our family friends. And then his son went to I Get Woods and I went to Hol- um St. Aloysius. He was dropping us off in the car. And he's gone like, what do you want to be when you're older? I goes, I want to be rich. And I meant it. Yeah. Like, I said, I want to be rich. He goes, ah, but that's not a job. It blew my mind. It could be. It blew my mind though, because I was like, that was my plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to figure out but, what I'm going to do to actually to get me, rich. He's gone to me, but you need a job to be rich. You need to do something. So then I started lo- looking. And then one time I, I, I got some careers thing. I might have been 13 or 14. It may be even younger. I was mad young. Yeah. Like, and then I, I got some careers thing and it said barristers get paid like up to a million pound a year. The top barristers said, so that's what I want to do. You saw a million so pounds. So that's how you just decided yeah. that you was going to do. That's what I want to do. I said like, they said up to like the top, top ones, get a million pound. Or it might even be a hundred bags, you know, it wasn't even, might not even been a million, might been a hundred yeah. bags. So you, I said, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And so from there, I was going to be a lawyer. And like people like you argue all the time anyway. Why, you Why arguing? not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got an opinion on everything. You yeah. should be a lawyer. I was like, whatever. That's what I'll do. And that's how I decided that was what I was going to do. But I liked acting. I always went to acting classes, but okay. I went to acting class because there was always girls. Oh, right. See, I'm seeing, I'm now seeing the motivation now. I'm seeing the motivation. You see so me? it's money and girls that you followed. No, no, no. There was, last, last. Like, when, you know, like there was acting classes I went to. It was just me and my brethren and like 20 girls. <laughs> <laughs> you're comfy. So you're getting every time. You're good. Like, like, me and my, like literally. And so any acting class I went to outside, there was... There was a lot of free provision at the time as well because yeah. like the Labour government and all of that, they mm-hmm. had like lots of free provision. 
And so like during that time, there was so many free things, like free acting class, free this, free that, summer university. So like we all went to London Met. I met a lot of my brethren because I grew up in Islington. I met a lot of my brethren from Islington outside of my school because I went summer university, which was like in the summer, you got to go to London Met and just do free courses and pretend you're going uni. Do you know how many people I've heard Wait, say this? For real? People have asked me about this a few times. I was working in um <laughs> I was working somewhere once and someone was like, Do she they still say. do that? They don't yeah. If this was America, I'll say it was strip club. <laughs> 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 and people were still asking me if they do that. And no, they don't do that anymore. No, but like, there were so, like so many free provisions. Yeah. Like, I went to a lot of free, a lot of my free drama stuff in the summer. I went, the stuff what I'm talking about with all the girls was mm -hmm. like summer university and all of that stuff. And so I really liked acting, but this is going to sound mad as well. I didn't know any actors. I'd never seen an actor before in my life. TV land was on TV. And it's sounding mad because you've got TikTok and you've got Snapchat, you've got social media now. Yeah. And you see rappers, you see actors, you see famous people every day. But back then, I didn't know any of these people. I'd never seen an actor before in my life. No Clock was one of the first actors I'd seen in real life. And because I'd never even seen any of these programs, I didn't even believe he was an actor. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, my teacher tells me you're an actor. Do you make money from doing that? That was the first thing I said to No <laughs> Clock. He goes, yeah, I do all right. He goes, what programs are you in? He goes, oh, Alvindus and Pet and like uh, um, yeah. Doctor Who. I goes, what's that? Like, you know, I wasn't watching mm, yeah. their programs. But the point is, because my aspiration was capped because I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't have the information. Now all the young people have all the information on the internet. Mm -hmm. So you can dream however, whichever way you want. You can, you can even teach yourself. My older son has got 35K subscribers on YouTube. Yeah. I've never had 35k subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> what does he do? He does like football clips. Yeah. Like that go viral. Literally. He's had like millions of views. I didn't even know this. Yeah. Until his little brother goes, oh, you know, like blah, blah, blah. He's got to do that. I said, what? And I said, show me. I said, show me. <laughs> That's crazy. But do you get what I'm saying? So like kids, no, he's doing different. that. He's doing that as a 10, 11 year old. Mm -hmm. Without me even assisting him. Like, I'm his dad. Like, I'm like, I'm somebody in media. <laughs> I've not even had an input yeah. into that. Do you get what I'm saying? So, like, in a way, I feel like um, information is more easily accessible. So, at the time, I didn't really think acting was a viable career. And the only career that I saw that could make me 100 bags <laughs> was being was, a barrister. Be, yeah. And so, I was always going to do law. Makes sense. It That's makes amazing. Sense. Sense. So, at what point did you say, okay... Laws off the table, and we're gonna continue when, doing the acting. When adulthood went to number one in the box office on the same week that I was graduating from uni. Okay. Okay. So I had adulthood coming out around the same time I was graduating from uni. It made sense to give it a try, no? Yeah. And so I said I was gonna take a year out. But then after that, I did a year and then I went to law school. My mum was like, this is not working. Right, because you because you mentioned, <laughs> I was going to say, because you just mentioned that, obviously, you was out after uni for about a year and you wasn't getting any acting jobs. Yeah, it was so, it was, it was quite depressing, really, mm -hmm. because, like, I wasn't making that much money. Like, I was lit before. Like, remember, I was a youth. Yeah. I'm lit. You don't really have responsibilities. You're going uni. Like, I'm still collecting student loan. I'm collecting every money. I'm just collecting any money. My pocket was swollen. Yeah. And then like, you've got this film out and nothing's running. Yeah. And like, I'm not lit, bro. And I'm just like, I need to, I need to do something. I need to grind. So then my mom was like, what do you want to do? Are you going to carry on? I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to go law school because I, I want to do law anyway. Mm -hmm. So then I went law school and then at the end of law school, I got offered like four acting roles. So I was like, oh, this Can you imagine? To, so this is what I'm supposed to be doing, man. Because yeah. I could have just turned them down and said, oh, I'm just going to do law. Yeah. But I couldn't bring it for myself to turn them down. And at that moment, I decided that, because at that point, Plan B had made a film called Ill Manners. Adam Deacon was about to make Another Hood. Jamie Winston had made a film called, can't remember what it's called. It was Elfie Hopkins. And these were all people that I, I was in films with. Yeah. They were mm. actors. And so at that point, I decided I wanted to make my own film. And so I was going to be a director. And I was the only way for me to make this acting industry thing work 
is if I make my own content and which is what has led us to where I am today. How old were you at that point? 22 or 23. That's young. You just said- I made my first film when I was 24 or 25. Wow. You just like So it's a lot was I was 25, I think. 25? Yeah, when I made it, I think. I was, that was, I made It's A Lot in 2013. It came out in 2012, sorry. I made no, I made it in 2012. So I don't know. Do Someone's asking if this minus is minus eleven. Minus if this 11. is live. Sorry guys, it is it's, it's live. It's live. It's, it's live. live. We're live. You lot can't do that on your podcast. It's live. Oh my god. It's live. They're chopping it up. It's live. Look, if you're saying if it's is this live and we're responding, okay, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's live. It's live. Okay. It's live, innit? Someone also asked you, um, why didn't you go to America like Dampson and Boy again then man? They're younger than me, man. They came after. Mm. Remember, them man, like them man, were looking to us. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, people forget these are a lot of youths. It's true. This is this is like, why I say legend. This, this is the blueprint. Like, this is the blueprint. This is the Remember, blueprint. Remember, we like them man. The only reason, like, I know them man. They're not from my generation. The only reason I know them man is because they've seen my work, and obviously, I've seen their work because it's so elevated. But like, that's the only reason I have a relationship with Dampson and Boyego. Like, I'll hail them up when I see them. It's because. Like they've seen me like mm-hmm. from before they were doing what they were doing. And so for me, how can I even think about America like yeah. <laughs> at that point? At that, at that point, that, at that that point, point yeah. like, I don't even, I don't even I couldn't even remember. This is why I travel everywhere. I try to see everything. And I was listening to Leo yesterday as well. Like and he said in his podcast, if someone says there's someone on a boat somewhere and they're making the best music in the world, he said he will catch a plane and go and see the boat to see listen to it i that's why you have to expose yourself to a lot of things and experience as many things as possible Mm -hmm. because actually you're capped by your knowledge and your environment Mm -hmm. and so for me i couldn't even conceive of america and also those men them them men got the rose here yeah so star wars was here do you get what i'm saying star wars audition actors here like i think Dabson got the role from From here here. yeah yeah. do you get what i'm saying the only person that actually really went to america was a melamine wow like the lead guy from Kiddo. Yeah. Like he was the only person. And he was young when he yeah. done it. And I just thought he was mad. I couldn't believe this guy left. He was 25. At 25, I made it a lot, right? Yeah. My first film I made at 25, yeah? This guy left England to go to America at 25. And then he bagged the job and he stayed there ever since. Crazy. I thought he was a, I thought he was, he's the one that did that. Mm-hmm. Everyone else got their roles from here. Like True. Daniel Kaluuya got his role from here, Letitia Wright. Well, they got their role from here. And then obviously those roles were international, global roles what and then about, elevated them to the next level. What about Ashley Waters? He was in um, Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah, but I think he done that in Canada because Ashley Waters has not been allowed to go to America. Uh, but you're going to have to ask him. Well, I can't yeah, be I see, I see, I see, I see, I don't I want Ashley to be on to me. That's my big bro. That's big bro there, you know. That's big bro. Like, you, like always after to A-Lop because that's like, like I said, that's, that's like, that's an icon in every sense of the word. Yeah. Okay. So how do you make a movie? Like from the from the from the from the start to the to the end. What do you want? A, Tell a, us. a TikTok tutorial. Wait, but, wait, yeah, but yeah, wait. Yeah. Yes, a TikTok. T- but one question because this person's gonna keep asking. Do you actually like onions in your burger? This is gonna disappoint everyone. Yeah, I did not write that script. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even eat burgers. I don't like burgers. You see me? I'm a like I'm a I'm a nice cuisine guy. I'm a sea bass or salmon. Like, I might have a Nando's, like, you know, but there. I don't even like Nando's. You like clean That's food. Acting. Like, yeah, I don't even like, you see that, literally, I'll be honest to you, yeah? The burger question that everyone's been dying to ask me, <laughs> I don't even eat red meat. <laughs> so, even if I'm having a chicken burger, I don't want onions in a chicken, but like, I don't actually eat red meat. So I have chicken and I have fish. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm. I'm not. I've In read other me. words, he's got a rich man's cleft palate. You understand? No, you have yeah, to, yeah. man. You, you have to. You look. understand? You, you know what? You Someone look. said something that I heard yesterday. Yeah, they said generational health. Wow, it blew my mind. I've never generational heard that. You know? I heard gener- we generational talk about wealth. Generational yeah. wealth, but we never talk about generational health. Oh my gosh! I was like, this is amazing reasoning. Mm. So it's better to to to, to practice. Someone said you lied to us. <laughs> they said you lied to us. <laughs> 
Huh? They said you lied to us. It's what acting, it's acting. It's acting. It's acting. Moody it's acting. lied to you. <laughs> he said Moody lied to you. Grey Femio Yaniran did not lie to you. This grey uncle does not eat burgers, fam. That's for the youth, them. Like, I don't really. Burgers and chips. Why? Like, what's that? I hear it. You know, like rice and salmon, Sam- a bit of salad, yeah. a bit of like veg, yeah. sea bass. I hear yeah, it. now yeah. you're talking. Come okay. on, man. Okay, we hear it. Okay, so give us that tutorial. We yeah. want to hear it. How do you make a how film? You, make a movie? you can't do it on your own. Yeah. So guys, he's about to give us a tutorial of how to make a movie. This is deep. Um, so I'll I'll just use one of my f- f- films. So then, the first film that we I ever did was a film called It's a Lot, and so I remember like, I remember shortly after finishing uni, I met a guy called Justin Donaldson. And Justin was an actor and he used to do theatre workshops. So I linked him. I used to go and do his theatre workshops because I also believe that as an actor, you should practice acting all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like going to the gym. If you want to be a hench, you have to go to the gym all the time. If you want to lose weight, maybe you run or change your diet. And if you want to be an actor, you should act all the time. Yeah, Like create opportunities for you to act all the time. That's why I like them social media guys that create that content. They put it out, yeah. test it on their audience funny or not funny blah 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 love it yeah so i think you should always be practicing your craft um so i linked him and then one day and but i was still trying to do music i was trying to be an mc i don't need because that was actually more than acting that was my real dream what being an mc it sounds so wild yeah i've heard i've heard that you did an mtv cypher say swear well, no, I don't think I did it. You didn't do cypher. it. I did a cipher. You did a cipher, so it wasn't that an MTV. Comes out. It comes. All I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> there's footage that comes out of me all the time of me oh, yeah. MCing. Yeah, I was I was not a good MC, and I was good at a certain point, but I, I just didn't carry on. But. I remember when I stopped saying I'm not doing music no more. It's like I found that I was having a son. I said, you know what? You can't chase every dream. Pick. Yeah. Because your goal now is, I was living out that verse in the Bible that I can't remember. I think it's Timothy 5.12. First Timothy 5.12. Yeah, I reckon it. I think that's what it is, but I'm not sure. But yeah, that little verse, yeah, was that, you know, your goal now is to look after your family. Like, you can have dreams, but just pick one. Yeah. <laughs> And make it work. And then what, the so you, one you, was like the film and TV. You never wrote something since then? No, I've never written a lyric since then. It's crazy. Because I said that, that that dream is not, that dream can't be part of the package anymore. That dream needs to like, that's, my son could be a rapper. Like, do you get what I'm saying? That could be his, like. At the time, did you see that as a sacrifice? Like, obviously. No, you said... because I wasn't a big MC. Like, I wasn't oh, popping. Okay. Like, okay. I wasn't, like, I was just like. <laughs> I was some actor that was rapping on the side. side okay. Now people do it like it's a thing, but yeah. back then, like you know. But anyway, I remember. Um, what was you? What was your question? What was my question? Movie. 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 How to, how to tutorial wanna, of a movie. How to make so a then movie. I so my brethren's gone to me. Oh, I know Nikki Slimting. Justin's gone to me. I know Nikki. I goes what Nikki Slimting from like his connection he goes yeah like he's looking at me like I'm mad. He's like yeah that's my little brother still. I'm like what like he's like yeah. yeah, yeah. Takes me to the studio. There's a place called Jetstar in West Happy Places. I'm so old. Because you're like nodding. You're like, what is Jetstar? Jetstar. Yeah. There was a place called Jetstar, yeah? In, Where was it? In in Northwest London, in Housden. Vash will know this place. They used to cut all the records, Jamaican records there. And a lot of artists used to cut their CDs mm. and mixtapes at this place. Okay. And my brethren, Nikki Slimting now, like who's my, you know, my Cody, my business partner. Like, at the time, the guy took me to a studio. He sat there behind this big mixing desk. Like, I'm like, raw, like, it's Nikki Slimting and he's in a big studio. And, but Nikki's gassed by me. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's like, raw, it's Femi. Like, you're from the films. I'm like, gassed. I'm like, raw, you're from, but you don't understand. You're from East Connection. Like, you know, like, yeah. I was listening to you. I was taping your your shows all the time. Anyway, we linked. He was like, oh, he's got ideas to make films. In my head, I'm like, right, I thought we we're gonna make tunes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he pitches me all these films, pitches me a film um called Money. Script was done, pitches me another film called It's a Lot. Um, he bought it. it's a lot at a treatment. I remember now. 
I'm on the set of Another Hood and I'm like, raw, I've got a comedy film as well that Nikki pitched me, but it's slightly different. Like, let me try to see if I can make that. And so then Nikki, I, I lost touch with Nikki at this time. And then um, this is hilarious. You know, on Facebook, Instagram has it now as well, but Facebook used to have this thing, friends you might know. Yeah. Yeah. And Nikki came up one day and I thought, oh, I wonder if that's him. And I clicked it, I messaged him. I goes, you know what? I used to have this message on my desktop for years. And the message was, because I screenshotted it. I said, I've got a plan to get this film made. Um, here's my number, call me. And then he shouted me because he changed. We lost touch somehow. Mm -hmm. so we weren't really bredgens, right? So yeah. someone introduced me to him when I was about 20. And I got back in touch with him when I was about 22, 23. Okay. And then um, we um, we started trying to get It's A Lot made. So what I'd done at that point, I wrote the script and um, Nikki had a treatment. I turned that into a script. Um, the script was all right. And then I kept editing the script. I made a deck, a uh, pitch deck that had like probably like, you know, my vision and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, I linked someone that told me, he gave me a lot of contacts. And what he did, he gave me a contact to make, he, he introduced me to a guy that charged me 500 pounds to make a script, uh, a schedule and a budget, a professional yeah. budget and a schedule. So then the guy charged me money to do that. I later realized that the software that he used, you can buy for 500 pounds. <laughs> so I could have just bought it and learned it myself, which I did later on. Okay. And um, I still use it till this day. Like I've used upgraded versions, but like, you know, I still make my own budgets and schedules mm -hmm. and work with production management teams to do that. Like, And I've got understanding of that because I've had to teach myself how to do it basically along know, the way. Yeah. And then, um, and then I started pitching it to everyone. I remember another hood came out. I, I sent it to the company that made another hood at the time called revolver they've gone out of business now but they were a big company during our time because they released all the like street films okay i pitched it to everyone that would listen i was like i was on a hunt i was hungry i pitched it because what drove me actually tell a lie was i found out i was having my son so i had this dream to write this script for ages and I found out I was having a son and then I wrote this script quickly because <laughs> I realized because and when I was I found out I was having my son, I started writing the script and I got a job at an asset management company in the city. So I was working in Liverpool Street like and I realized I didn't want to do a job. <laughs> yeah. And it was a good job. It was well paid. Like, you know, I was in the city, so I wasn't like. I was in Liverpool Street, like, you know, I had a proper, I was wearing a suit every day, but I was just like, nah, this is not it, man. And so I just hustled. I was contacting everyone. So again, so I've got the script. I've got a, a deck or like a pack or presentation, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. I've got a schedule. I've got a budget. I just pitch it to everyone that would listen, investors. Like I was just taking it around for ages. Eventually I got, financing from a company called revolver no kaleidoscope which still exists and um they set up a fund and then um i eventually got money to make it i got i think 200 grand 250 grand to make it from them mm -hmm. and then and then what else do you want to know okay because i was just about to ask so with the 200 grand like does that sort of money pay for your actors as well that pays it? for everything it pays for absolutely everything yeah that was cheap that was a cheap movie it looks okay. fantastic for how cheap it was yeah. yeah but it was a cheap like that's nothing in film that's nothing cool so you get the budget you, everything comes into play because you've already got the plan um does it just how do you get it to get out the so basically everything doesn't really come into place because like you're going to so you get the budget to do the prep. You do get the budget for the prep, the shoot, and the post. Okay. The prep was four weeks, three weeks on that film because we didn't have that much money. The shoot was about three weeks and the post was about two, three months. And so the budget pays for that period of time. That's what your budget pays for. So you, shed, you break down your budget to pay for all of those things. Mm. So as part of the prep, you think about 
you rewrite the script, you do an updated schedule, you cast the actors, you recruit all your team, your camera team, your lighting team, your all of that. You have meetings with them, you go on recce's with them, you do all of that. So that's, you know, intense prep for the film. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then you go into your shoot period where you now you're implementing what you've planned for the film. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you go into your, um, your post-production, which is usually editing and sound mix and grade and sourcing commercial music. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that as in sourcing music, like if I want to put a central C song in my film, God. yeah, sourcing that and making sure I collect all the paperwork to be able to do that. And then also getting a composer to make original music to like, you know, create emotional moments in the film. Mm -hmm. And then I deliver the film to the distributor. Luckily for me, Kaleidoscope was a distributor within that situation. Okay. And so they distributed the film. They didn't do a good job and they distributed it and got it into the cinemas. And that was how they, okay. that film went. Because I was just about to ask, someone in here has asked, why isn't there enough information out there about the process of getting your films distributed? Do you know what's mad? If someone will film it, yeah, I will do a tutorial. I will, I will just give it for free. I'll do free that. Free game. I'll, free game. What are you saying? Can we run that? The, on our show <laughs> you got just want the whole thing on your yeah, show you want on one show where I just give you give us all of it yeah, yeah. yeah. give you all of it maybe yeah let's do it yeah let's, let's talk about it let's do it let's talk about it let's talk about it you have to boss me on snapchat yeah. first <laughs> no, I've got you I've got you I've got you I've got Look you it. Said, yeah, we yeah, got so I love how you um, eliminated the distributor problem where, by just no, but creating wait, your own wait wait okay. wait because I, I've never distributed any of my films in the same way this is what's mind blowing so okay. if you want to talk about distribution Let's forget about shooting because a lot of people know how to shoot stuff, mm -hmm. right? Some of it is crap. One thing I will say about shooting stuff independently is number one, make sure you work really hard on your script and you refine your script because a lot of the scripts out there for short films, they're not necessarily that good. Number two, at the end of it, make sure that the sound is on point. People don't mix their sound. And now if your sound sounds ch cheap, even if your footage sounds so, for instance, you take this podcast. It looks clean. It's one mm -hmm. of the cleanest looking podcasts I've seen on the internet. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. It is live. No, no it looks <laughs> We're clean. We're live. Right? It's clean. Even before I knew who you guys were, like, I would see clips of, like, clean. Yeah. yeah. Very clean. But if the sound was bad, and so sound is very important. A lot of short films, what let them down is the sound is bad. Okay. So you have to get a sound mixer. Like, you know, like, how you get a sound engineer or, like, a a mass mix and mastered version of your rap record, mm -hmm. you need to do the same thing for your... For the sound. Yeah. For the sound right. on the movie. Yeah. And a lot of people don't do that. But anyway, the distribution problem. That was my first film. My second... But my first film didn't bang. Okay. Okay. So my first film is a lot. Came out in the cinema. Didn't make that much money. Then went to... Um, sold to Netflix... So at one point, I had two films on Netflix at the same time. It was kind of lit. But went on Netflix in 2013, but Netflix wasn't popping in 2013. 13, right. So let's park that for now, yeah? Mm -hmm. So then me and Nikki are depressed for about a year. We're just sad. So Nikki calls me Christmas 2013. He's like, Femi. And it's a lot. was like, it's about a middle-class black family. I didn't want to make a street film. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, I just don't want to keep making street films mm -hmm. all the time. They, like, you guys have been around me. I'm from ENDS, but I'm not just a yeah. street guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There's more. There's I'm yeah. not a street you like that. Like, do you know, like, from ENDS, but that's not me. You've like, got sense. I, I, there's so much yeah. more that I want to do all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my head's got big ideas, big dreams, like, all the time. Yeah. Right? So I want to make this film that's not a street film. Yeah. Came out, didn't do that well. Me and Nikki were sad. Nikki calls me Christmas 2013. He goes, Femi, do you want to make a street film? I goes, yep. <laughs> Cause you knew you knew that's what you needed. Didn't he it? goes, why? Um, he goes, what? I goes because I know it's gonna work. Yeah. And he tells me about the film. Yeah, this film was called Rude Boy Intentions at the time. It's now called The Intent, right? Uh, and so then, see. so then he tells me about this film, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah we should do it. He goes, are you sure? I goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, but do you know what I wanted to do? It? I I noticed the changing of the tide. So at that time. It was coming to the end of like that first end dobs wave. So it was like yeah. that Tinchy Shrider, end dobs, tiny temper. Duh, duh, duh. It was going back to the streets. Mm. Stormzy was coming out. Skeptor was coming back. 
um, Fairkey was new. Mm-hmm. Crepton Conan were new. Yeah. Every, like it was a whole new wave. Like man, that I'm talking about, they're like legends now. But mm-hmm, at that mm-hmm. time, they were new. Yeah, yeah. So it was a whole new wave was coming from the streets, and so I was like, but it was very street. Mm-hmm. Whereas when we were making this a lot, it was kind of like commercial, very bubblegum, accessible. So we were trying to make a film that fitted that palette, but then we kind of missed the wave. So by the time Nikki was telling me. Oh, let's do a street film. The yeah. streets was coming back. back. Right. I'm like, whatever youths are going to listen to these youths, yeah, are going to want a movie to go with 100%. it. Right. And so 100%. then, Nikki, I go to Nigeria, April 2014. Nikki writes the first draft of the script. On the first day I get back, we go to this place. It was a private members club. It's like Soul House. It doesn't exist no more. It's called a hospital club. He sat there, he read the script to me. I was like, this bangs, but give it to me. Let me put my little flavor on it. Took it away, put my little flavor on it. And then we linked a few of our brethrens. We linked a few of our brethrens and they gave us money to make the film. Um, It was all like, what's sick about the intent? He yeah? said his friends, you just said that no, so not, casually. Not even like, my brethrens from my uni, brethren's... Like, Let me tell you something. A lot of the people that funded the intent initially, a lot of them were Nikki's friends, not even my friends really. And like, the thing is about that film was that it's fully funded by black people. Okay. Wow. You saw people always like, oh, our community. That's amazing. The intent's fully funded by black people. Guys, the intent is fully funded by black people. The intent is fully funded yeah, it was black people by black people. The closest we got to white was a couple of my mixed race brothers put up money. <laughs> <laughs> he said a couple okay. light skin and inclusions, but yeah, the black people still did that. Mm. But, so then, we make the film, let's fast forward to distribution. I take it to every single distribution because I've got relation. I'm the guy from Kidderhood, so I know all the distributors. It's like, yeah. It's like being, I don't know. It's like being Crepton Conan. You know all the labels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I know all the distribution companies. So I go to all the distribution companies. They all say no. Hmm. They're like, it's too hood. It's too black. There's too many black people. Da, 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 is this is that is that. I said, oh, cool. One day I call Nikki. I goes, bro, we're gonna release the film ourselves. <laughs> She goes, what? Because we're going to put it out ourselves. Mm. We had it for 18 months. We couldn't get a big deal. We wanted a big bag for it. The big bag was not coming. No one's giving us this bag. So I said, we are going to put it out ourselves. He says to me, that's mad. Like, why? I goes, bro, let's figure it out. He didn't believe in it. And we first. figure out a way to put out the film ourselves. Yeah. And so for me, when people talk about the intent as a success, it was a success on lots of fronts because it could have just died. Yeah. We figured out a way to put it out ourselves, released it independently. Lots of things worked in our favor. Mm-hmm. We had like, we just had lots of things. Work. Instagram algorithm was quite nice then. Yeah. So like when I say everyone post the trailer at six o'clock, yeah. that's it's all the all whole country is <laughs> seeing. <laughs> at six o'clock. Okay, so obviously because you had to do it yourself, what's the difference between obviously doing it yourself and how a music distribution company, I mean, uh, sorry, film. music, a film distribution company would have done well, it. I paid for everything. Like me and Nikki paid for everything. We paid for the premiere. We paid, it's like what I'm doing with trapping. Like yeah. it's us. Like we, when you're seeing a poster, like I know how much that poster costs. Right. Like, you know, we paid for everything. We paid, we paid, I've got a budget mm-hmm. for the premiere. We did a TV advert. We had a TV advert running on Channel U. We basically serviced it to all the cinemas. We serviced. I did everything. Yeah. Like, so how much everything. did that 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 part of it cost you? Because you obviously could tell us that how was much about, you got for that. That was about seventy something bags. Wow, just for distribution. Yeah, but we raised it. So like we raised it, but also I've only ever taken two jobs in my life. I told you I had a son, so I got a job because I thought that was what you had to do. Yeah. I realized I didn't want to do that, and then I took another job because. Basically, I knew I needed money to release the film. So it was mad what I'd done, actually. 
So Nicky got some more money from his brethren. I got money from my brethren to do this release. Mm -hmm. And then I've gone to some of my brethren from uni. I've gone, listen, I've got a job, yeah? I'm going to be working part-time at a production company um, three days a week yeah. at a company called Kudos. They make like bare TV programs like Grantchester and these ITV dramas and okay, this okay. drama, Broadchurch. Mm -hmm. These dramas like, on, on ITV and Sky and them thing. So I just got a job. I was bored. They didn't even let me do nothing. They thought I'd... They didn't... They didn't realise who I was. Yeah. I've always had this yeah. dual thing in life, yeah? <laughs> where I'm in spaces where people don't know who I am sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of my knowledge, not even fame, just my knowledge, how much I know. So like I'm in this space, they think I'm like, they're making me do basic stuff that I can finish in one hour. And the rest of the day, I'm just promoting my film. Oh, okay, yeah, you had it nice. You had it nice. Though. And I'm getting paid. To basically do it. Well, I've done, yeah. I've gone to my brethren's listen. I've got this contract. I'm going to be getting paid, like, at least 30 certain bags from it. So borrow me money. And if basically the film doesn't work, I'll give you the... um, I can pay you from the, the wages. Yeah. I'm like, obviously, I'm not going to steal your money. They're basically my children's godparents, like whatever. So like, it's fine. Yeah, I'll pay you within a month of the film coming up because basically I get reported to by all the iTunes, movie, and all all these different platforms, PlayStation Store, this store, that store, da, 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 da. they report to me after a month. So I was like, I'll pay you within a month of the film coming. I'm so confident the film, imagine how mad I am. Yeah. I'm like so confident. I'm borrowing like 30 bags or something and I'm saying I'll pay you within a month. I don't know if it's going to make <laughs> fame. <laughs> but I've taken this job. So I'm like, yeah. worst case scenario, I'll use my wages, wages to, to pay you. Here's my contract. They were like, fine, fine, fine. And then, do you know what I did? I then took my wages and used it to release the film as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. it was double dipping. Yeah. You are, a, that's what you so call you, you, a So you took a full on risk. I was double risk. dipping. You took a yeah. full on risk. I was just... But I, I take mad... This is what I'm saying sometimes. Like, before we came on camera, I was like, I need to... You don't know which one. I never... I never... <laughs> no, not even that, bro. I never say no to myself. Yeah. If I envision it, that's what's going to happen. It's I got, won't stop until it happens. It's gotten you this far. Huh? It's gotten you But the this intent far. was going to go out and it was going to go out. We're going to have a premiere. We had a premiere in the West End, like... You get what I'm saying? Like the premiere in the West End, it was Ram. I got pictures. Like it was Ram. We just, it was just, it was just people to the point where when we put out the intent, when I say it, it was me, Nikki, and my cousin Olu, mm -hmm. it was us three at one point in the office working on the release. Yeah. When I say it was us, yeah, people don't believe me. They're like, oh, who was the distributor? I'm like, it was us. Like I, like me. There's a guy called Stuart Braid. He cut the trailer. Me, like, I gave him notes. Put this in the trailer. Trapping. Olu cut the trailer. It's my team. Like, it's us. It's in-house. Yeah. The poster, I told the girl for trapping. I told the girl, do this, do this, do this. She went. She done the trailer. Like, did you get what I'm saying? This is, like, in-house. Like, yeah. this is our creative. People don't, like, I really do the work. Like, I'm like a maniac. I'll stay up till midnight and wake up at 5 a.m. I'll go for a jog and come back and work again. Like, crazy. this is what it takes, though. You have to be a beast. Did you? So, sorry. Sorry, did, I'm just going to ask some of these questions quickly okay, just to get on, these out of the way. On. Oh, is that live? Yeah, it's yeah, live. Go on, go so, on. they've asked how do people get the opportunity to make a music for some of your films and what needs to be done? Like, is that an open music, opportunity? So I think just be popping, send music. It's not even, <laughs> it's easy. Like, yeah, just be send, music, and send music. Send music to, um, I'll make an email. Yeah. I'll let you lot know. Like That's make cool. an email like so our cool. company's called Fan Studios. Yeah. You can just go on the on the website, fanstudios.com, I think. And then there should be a like, you know, there's a page where you can type an email. Yeah. Yeah. Like a thing. Just send like an inquiry thing. Yeah, just yeah. send and just send it. Send See, whatever so you need. just send your music send a about link, essentially. Man. Um what does servicing to the cinema mean? As in like basically, you have to each cinema works. They now use this thing called VPF, which is a lot cheaper. So you have to basically deliver a DCP, a copy of your film, to every single cinema your film is going to be shown in. Right. And now you could do it by this thing called Veep Virtual Print or something like that. 
so it's cheaper, but back in the day it was expensive. When I was in the intent, it was more expensive. Now it's like a bill or something. Yeah. But you have to deliver to, but you have to, it's expensive to get made in the first place. Once you get it made, they send it by internet, by a key, by a code thing. And each cinema has their own copy of the film. And then it's, that's what's projected. Okay. It's like a secure way to. Send yeah. It. They basically stream the film. Yeah. That's sick. Knowing, sorry. Okay, so can okay, so obviously a distributor we, is a record label. Okay, so it's can you go? Thing. It's yeah, the yeah. same thing, but obviously for those that don't know, so a record label will normally like the artist will give the music to a record label, and mm-hmm. they'll come up with they'll uh, attach a budget to the project. Yeah, and they'll do that budget will include marketing, which includes like events and activations, posters, billboards online marketing, blogs, blah, 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 all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then PR, which includes this, interviews, yeah. then This Morning, Lorraine, BBC London, mm-hmm. whatever, newspaper interview, that, 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 that. Mm-hmm. And then um, they'll do like, they'll just manage the process of the release of the movie. Yeah. Like that's what, basically a record label and distributor are the same. And that same a distributor thing. does... That for movies, record label does that for records. I hope that answers the question. I love how the music, better. the music world and the film world kind of intertwines. Like yeah. Basically, they're monetizing intellectual property. Yeah. That's all everyone's doing. Mm. Like it's people are coming out of creative ideas, and there's business people. But luckily for me, like you know, I've got a brain that allows me to be able to do both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like me and Nikki are quite entrepreneurial in the way we think. Like we own a share in a basketball team. Like we own part of the London Lions. Like we're just like we're just business guys, isn't it? Like what we like, we love film and creativity. But if we stop working together tomorrow, Nikki will still have businesses. I still have businesses. Yeah. Like we're yeah. just business minded people. Yeah, you don't depend on each other. Yeah, like I mean, we depend on each other because like we need to support each other. Like Nikki woke up on there and said, I want to bring, bring Dame Dash to England. He came up with the whole package, mm-hmm. came up with the idea. I went, I met someone and they were like, I pitched it to them. They were gassed. We got the bag. We done it. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, we support each other in that way. Like, yeah. do you get what I'm saying? We support each other in, like Nikki woke up one day and said, I want to make a street film. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds hard. And we made the intent. Yeah. And that's yeah. taken us all around the world. Like, yeah. do you get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like, we support each other's visions. And like, you know, we 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 bust each other on like bags. So like we benefit from, it's a mutually beneficial like, sort of like relationship like and that we have. But at the same time, whether or not we work together, we're just both very entrepreneurial. Like before I met Nikki, I was in school selling CDs and chocolates. Yeah. Oh, you came up the grind and Yeah, ask anyone. <laughs> you came up the grind and Ask anyone from our school. Like, I was like, do you get what I'm saying? So like the mentality was always there. Nikki was putting on raves when he was 14. Okay. Okay. So, That's very so, young. Yeah, yeah. You so was she, you lot was doing NW, NW? No, I don't know. I didn't know Nikki then. Remember, he's okay. older than me. We yeah, didn't yeah. even grow up in the same area. I met him later on in life. But the point is... He was doing he that, was you know, like that, yeah. there was raves that were big back in the day mm-hmm. called like Young Man Standing, Stampede, mm-hmm. this one, that one. Yeah. They were his raves. And a lot of the grime MCs like Dizzy, Skepta, White, all, that was their first live performances. Like, you get, and he was putting them on. Very like, early. But like even before that, he was putting on jungle raves. Yeah. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So like to, for him to be like releasing movies now, it's not like... Uh, from such a young age. It's just translating crazy. those skill sets, sets transferable right. skills. Doing that from such a young age is crazy. Like you had a, to, to have a business mind from like 14. That's nuts. But if you grow up around it, remember my mom used to sell, you're Nigerian, right? Yeah. I'm so Nigerian. my mom used to sell lace. Uh, so okay. my mom used to go to Switzerland and sell lace. But before that, when we lived in Nigeria, my mom used to sell, my mom was a teacher, but she used to sell chin chin to her students at school. Yeah. Wow. Do you get them? So that's what I grew up in. Yeah. yeah. My mom had like three jobs. <laughs> yeah. My mom had three jobs, a business, and was at uni at the same time when I was in year eight. Wow. So like, what am I going to do when I grow up? That's what I grew up in. It's a standard. Like, yeah. I'm always going to be all right because yeah. like, I know hard work. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so like, that's what I've seen. Like, I've seen that from young, from like when, before I conceived of even coming to England. Mm. I want to take it back just a little bit and speak about obviously like coming from, a Nigerian background obviously you're one 
of the first people from the UK to like really break through the acting yeah. scene, especially from a Nigerian background. Mm. What was that like for you and your mom? Like, what did she think about you going into acting? She didn't really think much of it because I remember I told her I'm doing this acting thing. The thing is, my mom thought I was going to fail at school because I was such a bad dude. Mm -hmm. But I got A's and A stars. So she relaxed. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so she wasn't on my back because I did well at GCSE. So by the time I got to A levels and I was doing kid and that, mm -hmm. I told her oh, I'm going to do this film. She was like, oh, just make sure it doesn't affect your studies. And then the check came and it was a big coots check. She said, just make sure it doesn't affect your studies. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, do you know what? Do your thing. Do you know what I'm saying? But like, because, sure. because like, I'm now making, like, it Money. wasn't mad bread, but it was like At for you, for 17 year old, it was like, wow, okay. okay. So at first she just saw it as like extracurricular. She didn't really think much of it. Yeah. Like, I don't. And then her bredging started. Remember, I was like doing press. I was all over the news. Everywhere. I was like, I'm more so even, more, me more so than Adam or Mel, because I think the PR people clocked that I went to LSE. Yeah. And so they just used me as an angle. And so I was doing, I was doing more press than anyone in the film. I was like doing all the news channels. I was on, so my mum's bredgings started to clock me. And my mum got gassed because <laughs> I bredgings. I saw your son on CNN. Yeah. I saw, I, they were gassed. So now, the, now the, the the glory of it is starting to come. Yeah, and so like my mom, my mom's never really had a problem with it. I think she had a problem with it when I didn't. I was directionless. Okay. I yeah. Didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what my next job was. But even then, she was super supportive. Like she's probably been. I mean, my mom's obviously everyone's mom is like their biggest supporter. But my mom's never like. As long as I. Like yesterday I went to my mom, I, I was talking to her about something and I goes, you know what, that really upset me. And she was like, don't let it upset you. She advised me and she was like, let's pray about it. And then we prayed and then, do you know what I mean? My mom's nice. very supportive. She's very yeah. like wholesome. Like we have beef as well. Like we go at each other. <laughs> yeah. like, we go at each other a lot sometimes. Yeah? Yeah. But like more time, like we, we, we talk. She comes to me for advice. I go to her for advice. Like we've got a good, like solid relationship. That's amazing. Okay, cool. So we've got some more questions over here. Where do you source your actors for to be in your film on a tiny budget? You know what? Trapping, we did open auditions. So like we just posted it on Instagram. And that's how we found a lot of actors. But we paid everyone. I always pay people. Even though I pay, if you want five bags and I pay you a bag, that was just negotiation. And also I only had a bag. I'm not bumping you. <laughs> yeah. Like I know you're worth five bags, but I only had a bag on that day. So yeah. I paid you a bag. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So... <laughs> <laughs> so I um I always pay people, but like we we um for trapping we did open this I post stuff on my Instagram like looking for actors for this. So if you if you're into acting, just follow me and like you'll get turn on your notifications. And there. every so often, even people come to me looking for actors, and I'll put it on my story. Yeah, yeah. So I post it all the time. So your Instagram's just full of opportunity. I'll be honest, like sometimes it's me doing nonsense in Jamaica, but. <laughs> <laughs> more time like they're every so often like the whole point of following someone like me is to find out information about the industry and every so often i've got that information and i'm sharing it yeah. i'm not going to give everyone my number or my email because that's long and even if you email me what who am i to say when a role comes why am i going to think about you yeah it's true. Work so it's it better to well. like you can email casting at fan studios.com yeah that's the email, like where all the actors send their profile, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. and like when sometimes when other people are looking for roles, I'll go in there, I'll be like, oh, have you reached out to this person? Yeah. Reach out to that, like, do you know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah. I do try to keep that space for that, but at the same time, just follow me and I'll post stuff online yeah. all the time. So what's your Instagram for everyone that doesn't know? It's just it should, my it name. Be your name. It's at Femi Oye Niran. Yeah. 
That's it. But I'm about to be on Snapchat heavy still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, he's we're about gonna to get him on there still. We're we're gonna gonna and he's gonna he's gonna come back and do our little tutorial as well. So we're gonna get some. I've had enough of Instagram, so I'm I'm gonna use <laughs> you know it what? still. But Snapchat's my thing. There's now. so much going on. Like there's the stories, the main posts, the reels. Now, like how do you keep up with Instagram? No, I, I really want to be a Snapchat done. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at all the interfaces, so I yeah. looked at TikTok. It's too much. It's uh, too much. Too video. Much. Jumping, yeah. voices, singing, <laughs> oh, it's too much. Listen. And I looked at Snapchat, I said, that's my next yes, one. Is Snapchat is one. friends friends to talk to and post. And yeah. that's, my, post. that's my next one. Yeah. yeah. That's the one I'm going to be a that's Snapchat. That's the one you're going yeah. to yeah. so. conquer next. Yeah, man. Okay, so how does an average filmmaker secure funding? It's hard, but there's lots of soft money. I've never really got lots of soft money. And when I say soft money, I mean that's government money. Like you don't even really need to make back. So there's the BFI, they have a lot of funding for young up and coming filmmakers. So if you go on British Film Institute, just Google it and put funding and they'll tell you about their funding. There's lots of money on there. Like you just need to team up with a producer and then, you know, figure out a way to get it. But there's money. You lot are getting okay. the gems on here. I had no clue they done that. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. And um, how did you get the, f the intent on Netflix? We went through a digital distributor called the Movie Partnership. We sent it them. Someone connected me to them and um, their aggregator. Because Netflix doesn't really go to individual filmmakers. They go to aggregators. And this aggregator essentially sold the intent to Netflix for us. Okay. And they got a percentage, oh. kept it moving. But it's still our film. Yeah. They're just sort of like a sales person. That's lit. Interesting. Okay. So independence not independent, you're still working with other people, but it's just on your terms. Right? It's on your bread, isn't it? Yeah, every yeah. every it's your your I still had to market the intent. Mm -hmm. So we pay it's on your Do you, you think there was a lot of marketing to be done when you had all like the popping rappers on it already? Yes. Really? Because they weren't posting it every day. Oh okay. Did you have to hassle them to post it? I mean, I think they all posted it once. They kind of forget, they forget their actors as well. No, but like they just posted it. Like, I don't know. I don't remember them posting it every day. They might lie to you and say they did now, but at the time they, because everyone thinks at the time, yeah, we did put the rappers in it because they had profile and they were the hottest rappers at that time. Mm -hmm. And we were lucky because by the time we even put out the film, a lot of them just got bigger and bigger. Like Krepton Kona had a number one. Mm -hmm. When we put them in the film, they had better not waste my time. When we released the film, they had uh, Freak of the Week. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just, yeah, that's different that, levels. That contributed into the hype of seeing it. Like, oh my God, no, it was we exciting. People see. wanted to see yeah. if they could act and stuff. Like that's the intrigue. But I feel like everyone's a bit tired of that. People are always moaning to me saying, why do you only use rappers? Which I don't, it's a lie. Like we just put a trap in, only Abra is the rapper in it. Yeah. Everyone else is like actors. Yeah. So like people, but people are like getting annoyed at rappers being actors. Mm. Does audiences, that, does that make audiences you, are saying it. Does that make you want to stray and kind of like work with just the actors? Yeah, but I work with just the actors all the time. Like okay. I said, see, but they just don't see it. But they just they, not, they only see people the, choose to see what they exactly. choose to see. Exactly, it's true. Well, speaking about um that with Avril, when he came on, he was like, people always want like they. They hate street films, but they, they always want a different kind of black film. Yeah. But we're making different kind of black films as well. There's different kind of black films. There's, there's hundreds of different there's kind of black films come out all the time. See. There was a film called Rye Lane that came out in January. Loads of people from Ends haven't seen it. Mm. So it's set in Peckham. Sorry, it's guys. A love story. Can I just, yeah, can I just speak to the about. people on live real quick? Guys, we're literally trying to answer the questions and speak to you guys at the same time. So sometimes you're going to have to wait. <laughs> For me to answer the question or ask the question. So someone wants to know why you weren't in some other hood. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I I don't even know. You're going to have to ask Adam Deacon because I remember Richie Campbell, who plays Tyrone in it, saying to me, oh, I just did a photo shoot for another hood. And um, Adam... Adam... I was surprised that you weren't there. Okay. And I goes, I was surprised too. And then um and then eventually I called Adam and he was like he sends he said some stuff that didn't make sense. 
about why I didn't put me in it. But I don't even know if I wanted to be in another hood, to be fair. I'm in a different space in my life. Yeah. Was it like a riddle that he that he told? It wasn't about? a riddle. It was just like it was just like I don't really want to be like chatting about Adam Deacon like yeah. on on like it's, his films come out this yeah, weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone should go and watch some other hood. Jazzy's my brother. Adam's my brother. But like it was like he gave me a weird reason that I just thought, oh, that's a bit dumb. But <laughs> but, yeah. but at the same, same time, time is... I wanted to do well because yeah. like, they're my brothers. Like you know, I love them, man. Like, I love Jazzy. Like, you know, I think he deserves it. Adam as well. Like, I, like literally, I've got two sons. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say this. I've got two sons. They love each other, but they don't always like each other. Okay. Okay. They're, they're brothers. They're yeah. brothers. They're brothers. Okay, so, so that leads me into the question that I'm going to ask. So right now, obviously, you... Do you feel like your role... And what you've become in this industry has kind of affected the sort of relationships that you had in the start. So, for example, with Adam, um, do you feel like your work right now has kind of created a sort of a divide? Or not really, it? because like I boss Adam in the intent too. That's my biggest film. I boss him in that. He's yeah. in that. He didn't need to be in that. Like I didn't need Adam Deacon in that film yeah. to get. I had the money anyway. Yeah. I decided to put Getz in that film. No one else, me, Femi O'Neill, and everyone else is like, why are you putting Getz in the film? I'm like, I want Getz to be in the film. <laughs> like, I think he'll be good. Let's send him to go and audition for the casting director. And he went and he auditioned several times and he was good and he got a role. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, I, but I made that choice, not Getz. Getz didn't even want to do it. Getz was like, people keep asking me to act. I don't even want to act. Yeah. I don't want to audition. He went, he auditioned. I said, you know what? Don't come to me. Go and audition for like, the casting directors and if you're good they'll put you through if you're not good they won't put you through yeah. and that's how he got he went through the process so like i made the decision to put adam deacon in it no one else wanted to put him in the intent to i didn't need to put him in the intent to yeah but i did that for him i put adam in a, f- a show called droppers that was on itv2 like mm-hmm. i went to a mental health institute despite adam's agent and adam's um my mentor at the time saying to me, like, what? It's going to affect your insurance. Yeah. And Adam was saying to me, I really need to do this job. And that's why I did that job. Like, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I've actually bossed Adam. Oh, sorry I've that. actually bossed Adam quite a bit in, like, my little things that I was doing along the way. So, like, what I've become in the industry, whether it's affected our relationship, it's not really nothing to do with me because... I think I've been a stand-up guy, but maybe I haven't. I don't know. Like you're gonna have to ask him. I'd love him. I'd love to get his perspective on stuff. Like, but I don't like like I said, like his films come out this weekend. I want it to do well. I love him, love Jazzy. They're my bros. But at the same time, like saying that, oh, I've done certain or did it. I've not done nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I've just done me. Like I've not I've not You've not done anything. Okay, cool. So um who else do you who do you who have? Who else do you not talk to? Yeah, no, who else do you not talk to? Adam? Who else can, do you not talk to? You know to? what? I can legit call Adam now. We do talk. Like, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Like it's not, it's not like, it's not like. Remember, these are my work colleagues from 2004. Okay, is that how you see them, work colleagues? Adam's not my friend. He can't be my friend. I got mad love for him, yeah. but he can't be my friend. Why? Because you can't. There's certain things you can't not be able to pick up the phone to me. If you're my friend, you'd be able to pick up the phone to me okay. to say certain things. Yeah. My actual friends. See, like, like take, for instance, my brother. I'm close friends with a guy called Dapson, yeah? Mm-hmm. Like, just a normal guy. Like, Dapson, he does promotions, blah, blah, blah. He's got this thing, Summer of Love. I'm promoting his thing now. Okay. But like, I'm really, that's my good friend. See, when Dapson does something, one of his dances, and I don't come... I call him, we're like, Dapson, why are going? Like, you're right. He goes, bro, why are you calling me? Like, you didn't come to my thing. <laughs> like, I'm like, straight, I'm straight like oh, why are you taking offense? He's like, no, I'm offended. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you respect that, though? Do you get what I'm saying? Do you, res- like, do you, know, do you know, respect like, that? Be fact. like, no, Femi, I'm offended. I'm offended. Like, what do you mean you're like, no, you're only your user. Like, <laughs> You only call me when something's wrong with your car. You need that. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you respect like, that? That's though? my brethren. Like, yeah. that's like, because he's like, he's not. Yeah, he's letting man know, like, do you know what I'm saying? And so, like, for me, like, my real friends would do that. And so, like, there's certain things for me, like, I I, I wouldn't look at 
certain man in the industry as my brethrens like I used to because I thought they were my brethrens, okay. but they can't be my brethrens. Expect me to be close to my family. Expect me to be close to my to my kids. Expect me to be close to my mum, like my partner, like my little sister. Expect me to be close to to those people. Yeah. Don't expect me to be close to people in the industry, like because the industry is the industry and it's ever changing. When did you learn that though? When did you learn that it's not all friend buddy buddy and it's like because I'm me. It's like you know me what? When I made industry. when when we made the film, it's a lot, and we asked a few actors to be in it, and they just like that. I thought were my brethren's, and they just wouldn't get back to me, and they just wouldn't do it. I thought I was wild. Really? Yeah, I I was mad confused. Oh, that's deep. And then when the intent, some other actors turned it down as well. Mm -hmm. That were my brethren's. That are my brethren's till today. Like the intent, I offered it to a few actors. They turned it down. I was mad confused because mm. I thought like. This was the man them, the movement. Mm -hmm. That made you realise. I was a bit confused. Business, I was a bit like just, raw. Like, yeah. But that, then I, I don't have beef with anyone because mm -hmm. like, the thing is, I'm great. Like my mom, like I said, my mom prays a lot. <clears throat> I believe in God as well. Yeah. And God never sleeps. I, I don't do wrong by anyone. I do good business. Like, you know, I make sure people get paid. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I'm very um diligent in the way I handle my business and the way I handle people. Yeah. And so for me, the good hearted. Boy, yeah. Man. So for me, I'm always going to be blessed. Like, you know, I've always, I'm always, I'm not in a another hood, but I'm putting out trapping. I've got my own platform, The Drop. Yeah. I've got like Drunk History Black Stories coming out with Julie Adenuga hosting it, Michael Dapod, ZZ, like Koji Radical. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. Yeah. Like, how can I, if I would be depressed if I was where I was. You know, like when I wasn't, when I come out of uni. And then you're selling flyers. So. And I'm giving out flyers yeah, 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 on, on yeah. Um, the Royal Mouth to come for people to come and watch my play. Yeah. And Ed Sheeran's the only one making me feel good <laughs> about myself. <laughs> but do you know what? Do you know what? That's mad. Do you know how mad that is? That that's the person that at the time made me feel good about myself in that space. You know yeah. how crazy that is? Yeah. And that just goes back to the pure heart. It always wins because Ed Sheeran seeing you. He doesn't even know you're having a bad day. Yeah, but he uplifted my spirit in yeah. that situation. And like, I'm always gonna be happy for him. Like, you know, yeah. like, me and him don't even chat again. Like, but I'm always gonna be like, yeah, man, that you yeah. go all the way, man. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. Because it's like ultimately, like what he did for me in that moment, he doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. That gave you the extra push to carry on. Do you know what I mean? And so, like for me, like I'm blessed, so I can't really complain. Okay, cool. So we've seen you quite. You, um, you've been out in Jamaica and ATL a lot. No. What are you doing uh, out there? Life after lives. <laughs> yeah, life after lives. Life after lives. Live. <laughs> it. No, you ain't know, it. Uh, life after lives. You're loving it. You're so loving it. I Tell went to us. ATL. I went to the BT. I was going to go to Jamaica anyway because we're shooting a video from the soundtrack of Trapping. Oh, yeah. With popcorn. With popcorn. Yeah. Like, waste time. Abra's got a tune with... So what happened was um we made Trapping in 2021 and then we had the um a screening for it and obviously i know popcorn from the intent too um so i said poppy come true man like you know we've got a screening it was a mad screening because actually i need to message him but actually it was a mad <laughs> screening because we had pot of paper there it was one of my brethren's at a and r from um she she was at island no she was at Def Jam. 0207 yeah, Def Jam at Def the time, Shah Grant. And so she, we had a screening. She used to live in this sick apartment. They had a cinema downstairs. And she was like, oh, you could do a screening downstairs. I was like, sick. So I was like, bring some of your friends because I've never shown the film to anyone. Mm -hmm. So bring some of your friends. She brought her friends. She brought um, brought her friends. And then she brought pot of paper. I brought popcorn. Hypo was there as well. Um, Hypo was there. Who else was there? God bless Hypo so man. That's oh, yeah. a, like you know that brother like, 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 held us down a lot. Like even during the intent too and all of that stuff. And then popcorn come down. Wretch came down. Like loads of people came down. Anyway, popcorn watched the film. He said, "Femi, that film nasty." <laughs> like injecting needles da, da, da. Like, nasty, <laughs> nasty. Femi, da, da, da. But he said that Abra you was good in it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Hypo, I goes, yeah, you should make a tune with him. Like, I'd love to hear a tune with you and Abra. It would be sick. 
And then one day they bump into each other in a nightclub, like in tape. Yeah. They've gone up to each other and said, oh, do you know what? Uh, Femi keeps saying me and you should make a tune because I said the same thing to Abra. I'd love to hear you and Popcorn on a tune. And then anyway, Hypo calls Abra one day. They go studio together, Popcorn and Abra, and they made waste time. Yeah. So from that, I love the tune, like because it's, they were both like, yes, yours, Femi, it's your rhythm. Did it? I was like, nah, we need to take <laughs> the tune to the moon and back because it's my rhythm now. Yeah, you know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then I wanted to shoot a video for it. I wanted to shoot it half in Broadwater Farm, half in Jamaica, and um. So we went and shot the Jamaica bit um, with Poppy. And then, so I was always going to do that. And then I randomly get a call from um, someone that worked at BET that I've worked with a lot on the international side in the US. And they um, said, do you want to come to the BET Hip Hop Awards? Yeah. Um, I said, yeah, why not? Like, like I said, I like to expose myself to different things. Yeah. Like, Lifestyle's like nuts. The no, lifestyle's I like nuts. to see the world, man. So like, so it was a Friday and then he called me on Friday and so I was on a plane on a Monday. Mad. So you've gone from um, Jamaica to... No, I've gone from ATL to Jamaica. Okay, okay. And then okay. I was doing a Nigerian Independence Day on Sunday night party on Sunday night as well. So I had like an intimate... Now that I know, now that or well, pattern, you'd be at the next one. Oh yeah, like, the intimate, ring like, but it wasn't like a, like hundred and fifty people. Yeah, just nice. Eighty percent Nigerian, just yeah. playing bare, like you know, like because I think we need to create spaces Space, where we definitely. we just vibe to our thing. Yeah, you know, like one of those what's it, like, our little thing. We have chin chin, chin, pop, chin pop, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know, like small chops, small chops, you know, <laughs> like you know that them small like. So I was doing a Nigerian Independence Day <laughs> yeah. on the first of October, and then. On the second, on the morning, I, I flew to I flew to Atlanta. So talk to us about BET then. You need to talk to us so about the BET. BET. Awards, Hip Hop Awards, I thought was sick because again, it picks me up from my hotel, drove me. They, they had some dogs searching for guns in the car. I said, what? Yeah. I said, there's going to be yeah. guns here. Yeah. <laughs> they, they had some dogs. Then we drove there, got there, got to Red Car. They were like, Femi and Nikki, Femi and Nikki. Oh, it was mad. Oh, they, they knew you. They knew, man. Okay. They must have been briefed in advance, but still, it felt <laughs> nang. <laughs> so stepped out. Red carpet, brazy, like Boosie's there, Fat Joe's there, like this person, Swiss Beats. Everyone's just... So you say you didn't get the little man, the little man treatment that they usually give you? Nah, man, nah, 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 man, nah. So everyone goes on, does the red carpet. It's my turn to go on the red carpet. I go on the red carpet and like... I'm like, like, they're like, Femi, they put up a sign, Femi, international, Femi, over here, Femi. International. What up, Femi? <laughs> Femi, you know what up? Femi, I'm just there like, yeah, man, do my thing. <laughs> what was you wearing? What was you rocking? So I had a, I had a, because I, I did a smart cash thing, I had yeah. black trousers. Yeah. I'd like, do you know what's mad? I had these trainers on. Yeah. I had these trainers, but I'd never worn them at that time. Yeah. And then I had a blazer, like a linen blazer and a white shirt underneath, like an off-white. You did, you did it right. Still I did a fresh white. Because, the, yeah, but white. the Americans, like, you know the Americans, they were dressed like this, bro. Yeah. Like, they were, like, but I was like, you know what? I'm not going like, to go all out. Like, I need to represent you know I mean? it in a classy but subtle way. Yeah. Like, you know, so I stepped in, did like, and then we did, took the pictures, turned the corner now. And it's just bare press for like 200, 300 meters. Oh, so there's, the press is serious down there? Like lineup of people with mics like wow. like this. Like, is there any... So do you choose who you want to speak to? They, speak some of them to... pre-arranged press. Okay. And like, basically you have a person yeah. Yeah. that walks with you along the red carpet. They give you a staff member for you to walk the red carpet if you don't have your own press person. That sounds crazy. That's genius. And then, this I thought this was the award. This was a different building. We then had to catch a golf cart yeah. to the venue where the award was going to be hosted. They make you feel like they. Then we they like jumped on the golf cart. I'll show you videos in that. Jumped in the golf cart. Like, relax, you know. Or oh, you want to see the videos now? <laughs> if you want to show us, let's see. No, jumped on the, you jumped on the golf cart yeah. to the actual awards. Yeah. That's crazy. It wasn't mad far, but still, it was still a thing. That's it was crazy. crazy. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. a movie. That's a movie. So that's even just your getting like on your way there. You're on on my way. Follow me on my way. So what's it like when you actually get inside? Yeah. Like what's the show like? Because you said it's an actual show. 
you realize that it wasn't just the, the show. The show was epic, man. Show. The show was epic. I don't even remember them giving out that many awards. <laughs> I swear down. Maybe I was drunk. It was just performing. I don't think I drank. I think they did the awards like when no one was there and just cut it in. I don't remember that many awards being given out on the actual day. Yeah. What? It was a proper production, man. It was like a show. Like, it's a show. It was a show. show. And so for me, like the way they were like, so basically I'm at the award. It's kind of the auditorium still kind of empty. It's got signs say, don't film anything. After a while, everyone's filming everything. Yeah. Like, so initially I wasn't even filming because I was like, I don't want to be the get kicked out. I don't want to look gassed. Like yeah. the, after a while, the camera was cameraing. <laughs> Listen. Who was your favorite performances? It was they were all good, you know. Yeah. So I remember the first performance was um the baby. And then they did a thing where it was like the baby brought out sexy red. He's got a tune with sexy red. I don't know that tune. I don't I didn't really I'm only pre-sexy red now, you know. <laughs> when I go into dances and all the girls knew all the words. Yeah. When when you know, pound down and it <laughs> when all the girls I went to some I went to some I went to the GRM gala. Yeah. Yeah. All the girls went mad when that tune came on. Yeah. And then I went to the YouTube legacy party. All the girls went mad. I had to go home and look up the lyrics. I was like, what is this? And then I saw, I was like, eh, is this what the girls are singing? It's but yeah, crazy. it was wild in these streets. Crazy. Listen, so like, I didn't even really clock who she was, but she was, her performance was big on the night. But like for me, LL Cool J smashed it. Um, so, so Def did a whole thing where they had Ludacris, Jermaine Dupri had just everyone, like he had like the brat, Bawa, all of them performed. And then um City Girls were hard. <laughs> City Girls, City there. Girls, their performance was good. It was live, I saw it. Yeah. How can I critique? I don't know their music like that, but how can I critique the performance? The performance was performing, bro. Yeah. The performance, the choreography, everything, it was it was on point. Yeah. What's that what's their what's their hit song again? What's their what's their song? They've got bear songs, but I don't is know which real? one. Yeah. They've got loads of songs. Is it real ass shit? Give it. Real ass shit? Give it. Up, yeah. Man, nigga. Yeah, they, they, back, yeah. yeah, they did all of that. <laughs> it was went off. Yeah, that's crazy. And then that was a good performance. They, like a lot of the DJ drama performance was good because he brought out Fabulous. It brought out Jeezy. Jeezy. Jeezy's got this tune, yeah. That I love the yeah. first line. Is the last time I checked, I was the man in these streets. <laughs> Are you mad about? You well, see, your... <laughs> how do you start a song with that line? <laughs> Jeezy's really that guy, though. You know, Jeezy, He's really Jeezy, that guy. Basically, Jeezy, what? Like, I, I keep talking about my brethren Dapson a lot in this interview. Yeah, Dapson, like, I had a car. I got a car, like, when I was like started uni. Yeah, like Dapson basically tra taught me how to drive. Like, it was mad. Like I didn't, I didn't even have a license. I was, I don't even know what I was on. I just had pee, so I bought a car. Like yeah. you know, one of those was just yeah. young, so I bought a car. So anyway, we're driving. Every rave we went to, on the way there, we'll listen to Fog Motivation One Hundred and One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the way back, we'll listen to Slow Jams or Vibes Cartel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and this was like I'm talking like this is two thousand and five. 2006 like all were banging so like when i saw jeezy come out like literally everyone like ti performed fabulous performed but when jeezy came out everyone went mad yeah. and then he came out and did last time i checked i was the man in these streets yeah that's a mad way to start a song you know you know that's how brazy that line is though yeah. like you start taking it the in. last time he checked we don't know the last time he checked, but the last, last time, time he checked, he was. He's the just man. reminding you, he's not like, I'm yeah. the man in these streets, man. Yeah. Like, so yeah, Jeezy's, Jeezy's, um, like for me, like obviously because of like what it meant to me, like in that period of my life, my first car that was like the CD that we're playing all the time. That's like one of my favorite yeah. albums in life. Like you know, Fog, 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 Motivation 101. Yeah. No, so I yeah, so you. seeing him perform was sick. Um, what do you think about the way they um they mix up the the old performance with the um or the previous performance with the? I loved school, it. I musical. loved it, man. You, I loved it, man. I love that the baby came on, and he was performing with, with like, sexy red who yeah. came out yesterday. Yeah, and then brought out juvenile. Yeah, and and uh, Manny Fresh. Yeah, like Juvie for me, like at a time as well, Juvie. 
Like we were young, we shouldn't even been listening to that stuff. Like we were <laughs> when Juvie was like the man at Cash Money, like we were mad. Like man was like 12, 13, like yeah. you know, listening to Cash Money. Yeah. And like Juvie, Juvie's a legend, bro. Like for this rap thing, yeah. like he's like, like people don't understand. Juvenile was like the little Wayne before little Wayne. Like do you know what I mean? That's who little Wayne was not the worst one out of them, you know. Oh, <laughs> wait. It was the worst one. Remember, out of, out of Hot Boys, yeah. out of Hot Boys, Little Wayne was the worst one. What? So Juvie was like that? Yeah. Juvie in that crew, Cash Money, Juvie was the best rapper. Yeah. Oh, okay. That yeah, was the yeah, biggest okay. rapper. Okay, yeah. And then there was BG, and then there was Turk, and then there was Little Wayne. Oh, Little Wayne was but just the cool like kid. But it was like Turk and Little cool, Wayne. Little Wayne was, was the cool kid. Yeah. Little Wayne was their young pop. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, it makes sense. It makes that sense. That was their young pop. And so, like, Little Wayne for me, like when Little Wayne was doing the mixtapes was when Little Wayne became Little Wayne. Wayne mm. yeah. And like, and then he did he, like there was a mixtape series he done with Jewels. And I used to think Joel Santana was the best rapper. He was wiping the floor with him. <laughs> I said, this guy's fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, so for me, like, you know, I'm a real like proper like rap. Like, no, I can tell. I can know, tell. I pro- yeah. No, but I proper like music. So like you know, I know music. Yeah. Like this is what people don't understand. I know like American music, UK music. Yeah. Like I rock with everything, even if I don't like it, I'll listen to it so that I know what's going on. Yeah. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Even like like I said, like, I was like, what's this Pound Town thing? <laughs> I went home. I was like, like watch the video, researched everything. I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. I get that angle. Does it mean what's... I'm going to listen to a sexy red album? Not yeah. necessarily, yeah. but I know what it is. Yeah. You have to be informed, man. What's the chemistry like? Like sexy red alongside Juvie. Is the, does it? Is it the chemistry chemistry? It worked. The performance worked. I was watch. The thing is, all the performances were on point, and I was watching it thinking, like, you know what, UK people, we need to work hard on our performances, like just a show. And it wasn't just all the gimmicks. Sometimes it was just the sheer LL Cool J when he was performing, like he didn't get the response he wanted from the crowd. He wheeled it up. He said, I'm gonna do that again. You guys better clap. Not because, not because, <laughs> not because, yeah. not because, you know, like they were restarting it because it was a show. Like I said, they had seat fillers. Yeah. You know, when this, like when people got up, yeah. they had seat fillers sitting in. That's so wild. I went to the toilet yeah. once, yeah. They had someone come and sit in my seat. When I came back, they kicked them out. Yeah. It's a proper production. Yeah. yeah. There's an audience team just managing. It can't look empty on TV. Like when I told my BET guy, I goes, bro, you don't had seat fillers. It goes, it can't look empty on TV. Yeah. No, that's wild. The, the, the fact they take that much care into their production is mad. It's every seat. It's mad, detail. yeah. Yeah, every detail every matters. Detail that really. seat can't be empty. No. Yeah. So At like the baby done a performance, yeah, the opening performance, they had all the seat fillers in a seat, in a front seat. Because they were rushing to get the performance started. He had to do it again. When all the famous rappers came they to the front seat, yeah. so they can get their reactions. Yeah, and that, yeah, you had to film it again. That is mad. Ma- you know, do you know what it is? Yesterday, I went, I went out with some Americans here, yeah, but I took them to my brother Tom Mucci at a party. Yeah, and they loved it because they realized. I think they'd never seen Afrobeats reacted to like that because remember, Americans don't even have the cultural references; they just listen to it as a vibe. Mm. And so remember when people They're watching it And all the girls are singing all the words The two girls that I was with was like What's going on? Because <laughs> remember when Americans take it in They yeah. take it in as a vibe They mm. don't know the words sure. And so when these girls are singing the words And going mad like They were like shazamming every song And also they don't even know the early Afrobeat songs They don't know Wizkid Don't know They don't know They don't know all these They just know Essence <laughs> <laughs> it's actually true That's how they started Jumping on They don't know the Very beat. very recently She's like what's this Who's this I'm like it's Burner Boy She said Burner Burn Boy <laughs> But it's they're okay just, They're just she discovering key, him. Yeah. She doesn't know that She's not heard of like Early Burner Boy 2012 yeah, Burner Boy How Yeah. And so yeah So I think for me Seeing Americans Take in American girls Going mad to city girls I'm like oh I see, see mm-hmm. Seeing them going mad To like Sexy Red Okay, I get it now. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But the best performer on the night was LL Cool J. It was all these new people? LL Cool J destroyed the performance. I could, I was like, Uncle was doing fly kicks. Like he was hench. He was like, Fit. it's just. I'll be honest. <laughs> like, I, I've never seen anything like 
that in my life. In how my did performance. He, how did he perform though? Was it like a you know how the rate the roads have like a legend performance at the end of it? Is, is nah, it they like just that? mix it up, man. Oh, they just mix it up. So, no, so, so they had like DJ Jazzy Jeff and someone else going back to back. It, you see the way they done it, yeah? This is why like... It's nothing that I've seen before. It's probably nothing. Do, do you know, I'll be real to you. Like the way we do UK, I think it needs to be more intergenerational. Remember the baby opened the show. He had, he had Sexy Red perform with him. But then he also had Juvenile and and whatever that producer's name. I keep forgetting his name. Juvenile. Um... Their producer, their main producer. Manny. Huh? Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh. It so Manny? it was Manny Fresh and Juvenile. Like, so it was the baby, Sexy Red, Manny Fresh and Juvenile opened the show. Oh, okay. So it's not so just it was the combinations, new kids. It's not just the bro. new kids. No, the it was combinations. Yeah, they were nice. doing combinations. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, like yeah, putting yeah, yeah. Ronaldo with Bellingham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's combinations, <laughs> bro. <laughs> They're covering all. Yeah, all in every performance, of, yeah. you're watching like a There's little bit. Someone. Remember, like you know, DJ Drama done a performance, but you're like, it's fabulous. It's Jeezy. It's this. It's mm-hmm. like, do you get what I'm saying? So it's not like in England, yeah. Like what, like, old school man? Them stay here. And then the young it's so look. it's very annoying, you know that. Do you get that? Like, everyone yeah, think it's so like separated. I'll be honest, yeah. and It's like little clicks. It's I'll be honest. Nice. I want to hear like a Dave and D Double E song, just cause. Mm. Yeah. Not because in America that would happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just cause, not because like, not because it would chart. Not because just cause it'll be interesting to see what they make in the studio together. Yeah. Like I want to hear. Like, you know, Grime Original, Sharky Major mm-hmm. with, I don't know, yeah. like, Abracadabra. Just cause, like, just... But in America, things like that happen. Mm-hmm. Like, or they will put them together to perform. So, like, rather than they'll do a grime set. You know, in the UK, they'll be like, we'll do a special grime set. And then we'll just get the old school dance together. And then we'll do an old school garage thing with... Do you Max feel like that's D because we man. take things in like phases, though? Like, with yeah. the UK, we're like very... We take in one thing at a time. We can't consume I, I agree everything. With you. I, I agree with you. I, I think like in the UK, it's everything's fragmented. So like, I remember I had this conversation with one of my brethren maybe four or five years ago. When we, we started going to America heavy in like 2018, yeah, me and Nikki like will go America and stuff. 2018, maybe 2020, we started going to America. So we've not been going for long, like proper for work, link people and all of that stuff. And like they kept talking, referring to everything as grime. And we were just so con- like irritated. And then we engaged with it properly. It's like, why is everything not called grime? Yeah. Because in America, Public Enemy and The Baby and Little Baby is the same genre. Yeah. Mm. It's true. It's so true. And- Wiley and Central C is the same genre. <laughs> By, I the same, be. by the same, and no, I get, I get like Joe and Grime same thing because Joe came from Grime. My bro, but this is a problem in the UK. I was just because, about to say. Because Miami based, you see Uncle Luke and that, it's the same genre as, it doesn't sound the same. Yeah. You see Uncle Luke, like, you know like Uncle Luke, when they talk about Uncle Luke from Miami. Don't know about that. No, no. Like he's like a, what record, what was his record label? I can't even, he's like a big influential down south old school person in hip hop. Is, is he like a Shug? Yeah, kind of, but not, yeah, right? Yeah. But like he was huge in hip hop, right? But the music didn't sound like New York hip hop, mm. but they didn't call it a different genre. I feel like in the UK, because we call everything a different genre, we look for new names every time. I feel like it's fragmented things in a way that it shouldn't have. And it also it makes audiences pick sides. And so for me, when I was a youth man, like, and the thing is, Vash has known me since I was like 16. Like, literally, he's known me since like 16 years old. Like, he signed one of my brethren <laughs> when, when we were in secondary school. Like, he was managing one of my brethren, and this guy became Christian and didn't want to rap anymore. But, like, like that's how I know him. <laughs> he said, oh, that's yeah. how I know him. <laughs> no, but this is how I know him. This is how I originally met him. So, like, he's known me since I was a kid. Yeah. So, in them times, yeah, it was like, we all like so solid. At a certain point. And then, when So Solid had beef with Dizzy and Wiley, they didn't have beef with Dizzy and Wiley, they had beef with Grime. Oh, okay. And so then I couldn't like So Solid anymore because I like Grime more than anything in the world. Yeah. As a you. Yeah. So as an audience member, 
I was never gonna support So Solid anymore at that point because I was a youth. That was the way I looked at it because you created this fragmentation. Yeah, I get what you mean. And so imagine like when you're saying now oh, Grimes dead or like Grimes meaty, and then people like Central C are making banging tunes. As a youth, I don't want to listen to what's meaty. Yeah. And so it fragments everything. Every time there's a new sound, we want the old sound to be dead. Dead, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know as well, even when you think about that on a like a on a larger scale, like internationally, what that does is it makes it harder for people to kind of understand our music as a whole. Because if there's like different parts to it, you don't get the full effect of what now everyone just thinks we just do gram. All we talk about is, you know, shanking people, because that's what's global, that's what's at the top. I mean, not gram, drill. drill. Do you know what I mean? But, That's but what sis, we're saying. I've, like, I've got a show a for that. I've got genre. a show for that. Have you? It's called The Evolution of Black British Music. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a show yeah, for that. I've got a that, show for that. That one's going to be interesting still because... No, I made it. It's won an award. Oh, Go pre it. It's, it's on BET. Really? Yeah, it's on BET That's UK. amazing. So I made it. I've got a show for that. It looks at, like the past 30 years of Black British Music and how Jungle goes into Garage. Garage goes into Grime. Grime then fragments into like kind of funky yeah and and um road rap start happening at the same time and then after that it goes afro swing for about two three years <laughs> and then into a drill that's dope into the current day that's like, exactly road how rap, it happened road, as well. rap, road rap and drill and that's how and we talk about how that happened and like how like you know the different sounds kind of led to the creation of other sounds so like if you look at um if you look at um everyone that was in Garage wanted to be in Jungle, but the Jungle scene had it under lock and key, which is what actually um, Bushkin and Funny says in the documentary goes, the Jungle scene had it under lock and key. They yeah. couldn't even get in. So then they made the Garage scene. You said then Bushkin and I was like, wow. Yeah. Old and then you've got, you've got um, the Garage scene was like so anti-grime. Mm -hmm. Like, that again, that led to that scene, and obviously, you know what? The pivotal, a pivotal moment is like when, um, when um, Heartless Clash pay as you go. I think that was when Grime sort of began. It sounds mad to me, yeah. It sounds mad me making that claim, yeah. It sounds crazy claim to make because basically, when Heartless Clash pay, um, pay as you go, and Wiley and that sort of like Wiley sort of created this, went mad and mm -hmm. like, you know, made a million dubs for Pay As You Go the next day on mm, radio. Yeah. And I was listening, the next, I was taping it the next day. But the point is that scene, that was a moment where it showed that that scene wasn't for this other sound. Do you get what I'm saying? I get you. Uh, and that was a pivotal, pivotal moment. But anyway, so like then Garage Grime then is almost like a modern version of jungle because a lot of the garage a lot of the grime lot wanted to be jungleless they because jungle was a little bit more dark it was a little bit more street it was so it's a little like bit, the evolution of that yeah sound. so and then and then the, so they took elements of garage and elements of jungle yeah and then used that to slow jungle down a little bit made grime and then from there you got like you know like everyone got tired of grime because it was a bit violent. It was like yes, drill. it was. It was like drill. Like there, it was no space for the girls. Mm. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and so basically, <laughs> Funky House is basically them reverting back to garage <laughs> because the Funky I House vibe that. is like a, a up to date version, version of, of the garage. Even in raves now, they'll play old school that. garage and they'll play Funky mm -hmm. kind of it's, next to it. It's Funky like. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My man's asking, where's he from? <laughs> Where'd you find this? Do you know what? You have to, the separation. You have to the separation. Do you know what? It's the age. Do you find yeah, you're I'm, very, I'm drill you're, era. I'm, yeah, I'm just completely... when Grime was finishing, tiny temper pass out kind of thing. Like, yeah. That's, wow. Yeah, yeah, I know. Man, I know. So when you, when, when you said Bushkin, you threw me back. I was like, whoa. Wow. Bushkin. I saw Bushkin That's the other day. I saw, old I saw him school, old one extra. School. But yeah, but then but then you've got you've got the funky, you've got then funky happens. But that like, remember, we are all listening to at that time, we're listening to funky in the raves, but we're listening to road rap in our car. Cars. Right. Cause it's all mixtape. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So the music literally follows that, and then obviously eventually. All those scenes at a time, there was grime was happening again. Grime mm -hmm. came back again. 
with Skepta having his second like shut down Stormzy, like so Grime came back again. Yeah, because it did. Because Funky was too happy. UK every few years it just gets too happy and they want it to be dark again. Dark again. again. It's and crazy. so then Grime came back again with Stormzy, Novelist. Yeah. All those MCs like new MCs mm -hmm. kind of gave it life and then meant that all the old school Grime lot could come back come again back and again. have a different moment. Yeah. And they all had moments. And then, and then after that, that wave kind of wind down, it was happy again with true. Young Bane and them, man. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. And then, then there was the rise of Drill. Yeah, and then the Drill. And then when Young Bane and that, it was like, it was too happy again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think we're going back into a happy time. Because yeah. everybody's now tired of Drill now. And everyone wants to go back to either doing real rap. Yeah, that. Or they want to do happy music that's... Make make yeah, Afro swing people, make Afro swing great yeah, again. Yeah, Afro beats, Afro beats. I'm seeing a lot of. But I think Afro beats killed Afro beats. No, oh, Afro Afro beats killed Afro swing. Yeah, but Afro beats. Should I tell the you why Afro though? beats killed Afro swing? But well, you can't say that. I'll tell you why. So basically, Afro swing, yeah. Yeah. Was basically a rip off of Afro beats, yeah, okay. by by black British kids that were African. <laughs> yeah. That and was, then the African and, kids and, said, and, and then, you lot No, no, but wait. Because, <laughs> and that scene was only big because it was African kids at uni. That was their scene. True. Remember, that was a uni scene. It's so true. UK Funky is a uni scene. You're right. Afro, Afro, you see, Afro, Afro Swing yeah. was a uni scene. So that in uni, there's more African kids than anyone. The black kids are mainly African, of our African descent, right? right? And so Afro Swing was representative it was like a UK version of like what they were listening to through their parents from back home. Yeah. Right. And so, but what happened was the reason Afro beats for me, I didn't say this in the documentary, but I kind of suggest Do you know what? You're, the way I you suggest think about it. things is so fucked yeah. because you're so right. I'm a scientist. <laughs> like, <laughs> but imagine this, so the right. Afro beat scene, yeah. Then yeah. Wizkid and that, Remember when Wizkid and that were trying to get commercial here, Wizkid made, hey, Mama Sita with Tiny Temper. All them that wasn't real Wizkid. That he was just trying to catch a moment. Very watered yeah, down. He was trying to, yeah, yeah. But then their comments, they just kept chipping away, chipping away. And then when Afrobeats got massive, there was no more room for Afro yeah, Swing. Yeah. We didn't need it no more. Yeah, because you can't give us the watered You can't down give us the anymore. British version when I can, can listen to like Burner Boy at the O2 arena. Do you know what? I was saying this not long ago, you know. And so the reason Afro Swing is not a scene was because it wasn't a scene in the first place. It was just a ripoff. Those boys should rebrand. It's just Afro Beats <laughs> artists. <laughs> It's true. But do you know what it is? I don't feel like they have the capacity to do it. And the reason I say that is because when you're competing against real people that no. are in that. Do you know the, who produces not... it? Man that produced Funky House. True. You know, you know WizKids produced P2J was yeah. in Funky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, these men are just like, the majority the of well. the producers are man them from here. Yeah. Go yeah. link them, go make tunes Malik Berry's from here as well. Yeah, go link them, go it's make true. beats. Like, what do you mean? It's true, it's true. It's not even, imagine, it's not even like you have to go to Africa <laughs> to make the songs. You go out with producers here. The point is that, you know, those guys, like what the melodies, even Notes, all of them, they're very talented. I met Notes when he was in secondary school. He went to my school. I used to do a podcast called Cut The Chat. And he went to my school and... The reason I know he went, I didn't know him in school because he's much younger than me. But like he was coming, he had the screen, St. Aloysius school uniform or whatever. He was walking past the barber shop. He's like, what are you not doing? He goes, oh, we're doing a podcast. He's like, what for YouTube? He's like, oh, let me freestyle. And then he comes in, he does his little freestyle and he goes, oh yeah, yeah, one, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be a rapper. Like three, four years later, this year's yeah, a rapper. Way. This year's got Addison <laughs> Lee. I'm like, rah, this is mad. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and so like there's, there's, for me, like, a lot of the people from that scene, like, super talented. Yeah. But I just feel like, actually, rather than being wedded to the Afro Swing thing, I think Let's they're really Afro Beats artists. Yeah. They just don't know it. Yeah. They're, like, British Afro Beats artists. Yeah. Instead of trying to separate them into Afro Swing and... Listen. But do you know what I think it is as well, though? Sometimes, like, because of the authenticity of Afro Beats, when you... When you water it down and give us the British version of it. It doesn't hit the same. Do you know Afro Beats is quite watered down now? 
It is now, but you know, even you know, that's like, them watering it. You know, it down. a lot of so the imagine problem, us doing it. It's like lot, a, it's a, it's like a gimmick. No, but it doesn't that's have to be watered like. down because we are also Nigerian. We are also Ghanaian. We are also from Africa. True. We are just because British people don't look at us and pre us as an English you. Yeah, and so we need to start like actually, basically, you have to look at. I'm pan Africanist, right? Mm-hmm. That's why I like Jamaica. I like I like everywhere. Yeah. Like, like I, I want all black people to be one. Yeah. Right? I see that as a thing, right? And so for me, like when I look at like the way I look at these guys, I think base they need to add their value to what it means to be African. Agreed. Do you feel like Burner Boy does? The Burner Boy does that. He keeps it traditional. I mean, Burner Boy, no, but I mean, like when we're talk, when we're talking about people like Bane and mm-hmm. and oh, and, and like Bain. NSG and them, all these youths are African youths, you know. Every yeah. single one but of them. The about. thing is, when they're making these songs, I feel like the reason why I I right now I'm not a fan of that sort of idea, and I'll say it because I've I've heard somebody try to do it, and I didn't like the way it came across. Who was what? It? Trying to drop your brain. Okay, so I'll be very honest here. Yeah. Notes is new. Um, oh project, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There's a song on it. Um, it's got Odoma. What's his name? Odoma. There's Black. quite a Odoma few songs Black. on there. Odoma Odoma There's quite hard. a few songs on Cold. there where I felt like Pause. he should have been. He should have. He should have been more raw with his oh, Africanness. Okay. I felt like you're trying. You're trying to make Afro Afro beats or Afro swings, but it sounds like you're making it for white people. You're not making it for us. So therefore, it's not. We're not getting the real essence of mm. it, and it's not it's not attracting the people because right now there's a lot of Afro beats out there. It's raw as fuck. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Even though it's watered down, it's still got that very much. You know, African but there's feel. different. And everyone loves it. No, but there's different layers of Afro beats as well. So like, you've got people like Odumodu Black. You've got like, you've got like, um, what's his name? Oh, it escapes me. But you've got all these different artists. I'm gonna get my phone. Oh, someone else has got my phone. But like, but you got all these different artists, yeah. That are no, it's cool. It's cool. You can hold it. Like you got all these different artists that are not even big internationally yet. Mm-hmm. Like these Nigerian artists that are popping in Nigeria, but like internationally, they're not. No, I have to get. I have to find out what like some of these artists that. If I talk to my brethren, like my brethren Nikki, and I was like, "Oh, do you know this guy?" Doesn't he doesn't know who they are? I just know his whiskey and Burner Boy and Davido. Yeah. Like and so like right. but like but you've got like man like look. I'll show you. Obviously, you've got more bad, you've got Bella Schmurda, you've got all these different Nigerian artists mm-hmm. that are huge in Lagos. Yeah. But they're not internationally, they're not that big. And so, like, for me, I just feel like you can be British and be an Afrobeats artist. You shouldn't, like, being Nigerian, yeah. like, or living in Nigeria doesn't mean that it authenticates it because actually Burner Boy and Wizkid and Davido don't even really live in Nigeria anyway. No, I don't and they make I'm... all their tunes here. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm saying you have to live there to authenticate it, but you have to, like, you have to be that in it. If you're being Nigerian right now, be Nigerian. I the Nigerian don't try listeners. and Don't try and be half, like, try and come across and do half... British in in your music. Be African in that moment because we like the fact that you're from Africa, but you're British born and you can do Afro beats and you deliver it well. Don't water it down for obviously the British people because they're going to listen anyways. The Nigerian listeners love the authenticity. Like they love it when you're, when you're an Afro beat um, singer or rapper Mm -hmm. and you're from Nigeria or you live in Nigeria. Mm. They like the authenticity. It's a, it's a cheat code. Yeah, yeah. It's a cheat code. And also, Once you're authentic, well, back in it. You see like Ashaka, for instance, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Half my non-Nigerian friends don't know what he's saying. Like one of my... My, ga- yeah, my Ghanaian brethren said to me, yeah, it's really good, yeah, but his lyrics are not all that. I said, are you mad? Do you even know what he's saying? I said, are you mad? <laughs> Come on, hear lyrics. Lyrics, he's, he's speaking says, in proverbs. You to go. Yeah, the man's talking we're in we're proverbs. But like, do you know why I love him as well? Do you know why I love him? Because my kids are not Nigerian. Like, remember, I speak Yoruba. I might, that's my first language. Yeah. I learned Yoruba. I'm from Lagos. Like, I was born in Lagos. I moved there when I was 10. I'm a proper, fresh <laughs> youth. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And so for me, like, listening to him takes me back to home. And like, yeah. but for my kids also... They're able to learn my language because they're like, oh, dad, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, it means this. Duh, 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 duh. And so for me, the music's doing much more than just like, it's not, it's a vibe and it's an education to my youths. Yep. And sometimes the lyrics are mad witty and mm-hmm. funny. But like, if you can't understand it, it's hard for you to connect with it 
like you said, is in that way. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Because even like with Burner and Wiz and Dave, like it's very accessible. Mm -hmm. They barely even speak Yoruba. They like, they all say like one or two Yoruba words in a song. Mm -hmm. Whereas like with Ashake, you have like, this is a Yoruba lesson. But then again, you've got people that don't understand what they're saying singing their bars word for you know word. They're singing it word for word. They're not from Nigeria. They sure. don't understand it. But because of how the music comes across and the authenticity of it, they love it so yeah. much and they, they're they following it regardless. That, that no, would be for sure. me. I don't understand one word they're saying, um, but you start to appreciate other stuff like the production. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, like, the production, this is so good. They could be saying whatever they want. Like, it's amazing. It's like I'm a piano. Mm -hmm. Like, I love I'm a piano. But I don't know what they're saying after. I have to look yeah. up Nika. I have to go and look it up. Oh, yeah. So it means give it to them. All right, cool. I can give it to them. Okay. I can give it to them. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. those ones are like? But I have to look it up all the time. I have to look up, like, you know, like all those, all those like, with like them songs, I'm yeah. literally taking it in in real time with everyone. But like, the, I'm a piano. Remember, I went South African 2019 and I clocked it from then. And it's just blown and blown and blown. But from that time when I first. It, I was like, this is crazy. Like, what is because again, the reason I'm a piano is big is that the black British urban music scene, whatever you want to call it in England, has always got a dance music movement. I'm a piano is basically African dance music. How amazing that you've got Afrobeats blown up on one side, but British people like dance music. Mm. <laughs> mm. I remember when I came from Nigeria, yeah. And I'll turn on the radio and it'll be old school garage. I was like, what the hell is this? Why are they speeding up the vocals? Why? I, because again, I'm from West Africa. We don't have dance music in yeah. West. We don't have a house. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing in West Africa. Mm -hmm. But in South Africa, they've always had house. Remember, black coffee has been around for time. time. That's part of their thing. Like they've always got a house music. So in essence, I'm a piano is big because it's like, it's got the African twist. But on dance music, but in the UK, we love house, we love dance. And it's like not just white people, it's black people mm -hmm. are into house and dance, unlike no other black people in the world. <laughs> 100%. They don't listen to that music in, in West Africa, Caribbean. Do they? No other black, like maybe they listen in parts of America, but really it's not en masse listened to. Yeah. And so, in a way, I'm a piano serves that thing mm -hmm. that's like it's house music. But it's got that African twist on it, yeah. and it's just brazy. Like, just it's it's a vibe. If you've grown up again, it's a throwback. All the music's a throwback. It's true. So if you, it's basically the new funky, the new garage. I never looked at Emma Piano like that, you know. Everything repeats itself, and in the UK, I love it because the UK is always looking for a new scene. It's amazing. Yeah. That's mad. I've never looked at Emma Piano like that. Like it's the house version. Like it's house. Um, Nigerian music, this house yeah. and African music. Sorry. Yeah, I was at Danky Sounds recently, and that, they, they, oh, that looked cold. What in IB for? In IB for. Oh wow! Oh, it was absolutely when the sun with their lads. It was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Do you know what sun. I said? It was um, it was just so amazing. Like seeing so many black people just enjoy themselves. It was a beautiful vibe, beautiful weather, and the music. Like, and you just look around and everyone's dancing. Mm. Everyone's actually dancing. And that just shows as well. And there was like mixes of like, you know, them putting maybe trap songs into At My Piano and just so many different variations of house music mixed with UK music. Yeah. And you're just like, who thinks of these things? But well, you know, do you know what? what I, mean? why I, lo I love the UK. UK is the center of the universe for, for music mm -hmm. because the UK is very receptive to different sounds, sounds in a yeah. way that nowhere else is. So like, I've been going to Jamaica heavy, like I said, since 2017. Like, I've been to Jamaica like, I want to say 10 times or something since 2017, yeah? And they never, ever play anyone else's music and i love that i love that for them yeah i love do you know how amazing it is to go to somewhere they don't bread america everywhere breads america you know yeah. every country breads rap from america you go to jamaican dance yeah they're not playing no american music just straight, straight dance all. <laughs> straight dance all. but do you know what this last trip they were playing afro beats mm. i was very confused they played, it was a half and half. Yeah. 
They love it. They were playing Afro Afro taken That's, over. They were playing Afro beats. Because you got that you got the Afrobeat artists Remember, doing collabs with Jamaican artists. Remember, the Jamaican like Jamaican dance, yeah? This is the playlist, yeah? Dance all, dance all, dance all. Celine Dion and them man, Michael Jackson, them <laughs> random true. old school tunes. More dance all, dance all, dance all. You go home. Yeah? Now it's Afro beats, Afro beats, Afro beats. Dance all, dance all, dance all. Two two Celine Dion and them man. Yeah. More dance all, dance all, dance all. You go home. Yeah, yeah. Like that blew my mind. And so like, that's unique. But in the UK, how are we listen to music made in South Africa? There's not even many <laughs> South Africans here. Yeah. Like, but like the people are so receptive, receptive to everything. Like, you know, like I said, I took the American girls to this event yesterday and they were like, gassed by the Afro beats. DJ comes on, someone performs, DJ comes on. He starts playing um, dance hall. They look confused because I don't think Americans know dance hall like that. They just knew no, Sean Paul and them, man. Like, they were playing, like, they look confused, but, like, the, again, everyone's going mad singing. But they're like, I could see them, like, but how does everyone know all these songs? songs. And then, we're back to leave. The DJ starts playing, don't play with it, don't play with it. The girls are going mad again. <laughs> <laughs> and, they <just> start... <laughs> they, and they know arting as well, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, I feel like the UK is, like, the only place where you go where you get, like, all just music from everywhere and it's just mm -hmm. like all the different flavors like you and said, you know i, I you think as well sorry um i feel like a lot of artists have now started to realize that once you've made it in the uk it means you've touched you've touched a stage in your career where it's like yeah people know who you are yeah but uk people need to go and colonize other places too like what centuries then we need to yep. travel we need to get i mean a lot of our rappers can't travel because mm -hmm. you know Cram, yeah this is life but like the ones that can should and like you know whatever money you make you shouldn't just stay on ends and stunt on ends i think like and even for me like you know for a long time i was in kid it was a big film in the uk it didn't touch the world it didn't touch the world it's the biggest thing here but you know what the minute i jump on a plane guess what people recognize me for the intent because it was on netflix no one outside the UK recognizes me from Kid Oud. They don't know where it is. Which is mind blowing to anyone in the UK because they're like, no, you're the guy from Kid Oud. <laughs> to the outside world, I'm the guy from the intent. intent. Because Netflix, we, we had it on Netflix all around the world. And because it was all around the world, they were like, talk to me about Top Boy, they'll talk to me about the intent. That's it. What? So does Netflix allow people from the outside to watch? Um what they put on in the UK. No, you, it depends what deal. So like Netflix or written. So when a show is a Netflix original, that's global. Okay. So Top Boy is global. Yeah. So like people in India can watch Top Boy if they want. Yeah. Right. The intent, the deal we did with them, we did a world deal. So it was my film. It's not a Netflix original. Me and Nikki owned the intent. And we basically did a deal where they had it for the whole world apart from Africa. Because I'd already okay. sold Africa to someone else. Yeah. For like some mad deal. I just got some mad deal. Like, we just wanted <laughs> bread. <laughs> like, just, no, do you know what it is? It was a mad it deal, but is. like, it was just too long. Like, you know, I sold him to them for like 10 years. Like, it's not even 10 years yet, bro. Like, I'm not even going to get that film back for years. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I just, they just offered. So I was. was up? <laughs> yeah. So we grabbed the cash, you know, one of those ones. Mm -hmm. But the point is, like, you know, we, uh, we we need to we need to travel more because like our UK island is very small and people come here they use us to get big and then they move like like international artists like yeah. even the Afrobeats artists mm -hmm. this UK is a stepping stone to America, to America for them facts. and so like we need to be using like that France as a stepping stone Nigeria as a stepping stone we need to go and link them like we need to. Like we need to, we need to remember that war well, within an ecosystem. Like I said, like I'm a Pan Africanist. I love Jamaica as much as I love Nigeria. I love like because again, th these are all our places. These are all potential markets for us to tap into. I'm not even saying I've done it yet, but the intent made me realize the power of like, like spending your whole life. People are like, oh, it's Mooney from Kidot, and then you land in Antigua, and you're shopping, and men are coming up to you. Trying to offer you weed, and I'm like, I don't bun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and realizing that, raw, like, and the guys like, yeah, talking to me about the intent, and I'm like, raw, like, 
And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, have you seen the one with popcorn? He's like, no, 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 the other one. I was like, what? Okay, the original one. And that blew my mind. Yeah. And so that made me realize the potential of what we do. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. When did you start getting out there? You said you didn't really fly. Um, no, I was flying. I had passports, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My brother, please, please, please. Like, I was work flying. Like. Work-wise, like, you know what? In 2020, I decided that I wanted, like, me and Nikki are like, obviously that's my business partner. We decided, like, we wanted, uh, um, we wanted to be international. And so we, we went, to my brethren was going to the Grammys. My brethren, DJ Ace from One Extra, he was yeah. going to the Grammys and he was like, I'm going Grammys, like, here's my flight details. Yeah. I was like, I'm pulling up. <laughs> and and then our next brethren pulled up and it was just, we just flew over. So like me and Nikki usually fly with um, our main editor, but he also like just does videography for us sometimes. Oh, Olu, my little, cousin. Little cousin yeah. yeah, yeah, so like he flies with us a lot. He's been to a lot of countries for free. <laughs> but, but but yeah, so he flies. So we put him on a plane, and then um, he just just filming. One day we'll cut a documentary. Like he's just feel, he's got so much footage of us just all around the world, and um, yeah, we just flew out there, met a few people, came back, had an agent, came back, had a manager, just built like as in on the American side, and just built, been building from there. Hopefully, before the end of the year, we'll do our first deal. It'll be like a movie with a big studio out there. So yeah, man, but. All of that is like after three years. So it's not like man's been in meetings after. Nothing's quick, man. Nothing's quick. You just have to keep plugging away. But also you have to always, um, you have to always have a plan by yourself that's not contingent on other people. Mm. Has relying on people been a problem mm. for you? No. Like, yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, no. Because as an actor, you just have to rely on people to pick you. It's a pick me job, you know, imagine. Mm. No people on internet, oh, she's a pick me. Acting's a pick me job, you know. Yeah. What they, do you mean? They have to pick you. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you don't work. Yeah. Okay. You have to audition. It's not like rap. It's not like you go to studio. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, it's just me and my brother, and I feel like <laughs> chatting crap right now. Record it, and people listen to it. Yeah. It's true. They actually have to pick. They you. have to pick you. It's yeah. a pick me job, and so like unless you're picked, you can't. You're not on. Yeah. So is that what really made you feel like? going into directing and writing for your own self. I'll tell you the truth. What happened was I made, I was in Kid Altered when I was at university and I came out of university when I was 21. And there was adulthood premiere was like a week or two before, after my graduation. And I decided that I was going to go into acting full time. And within that first year, I did not get that many acting jobs. And I was bored out of my head because I was, at a, be, before, I was an actor, I was getting auditions, but I was also doing a very hard degree mm-hmm. at a very high standard uni. So I was busy, but I didn't realize what my degree was doing for me was like keeping me like busy as well as like, you know, when there wasn't that much acting work, I didn't really notice because I was busy doing something else anyway. Mm-hmm. And so then, when I was ready to get out there as an actor, there wasn't really that much work. And so I was like, oh, and my brethren called me and said, he's, he was on a gap year as well. He said, he's going to, he's working at some council. They've got some funding for people to make their short films. I should apply. I missed the deadline. He cheated for me to still get the bread. <laughs> yeah. He pushed his boss to give me the bread. I got the bread. I made my first short film. It was called Fresh Off The Boat. It was semi-autobiographical. And then from there, I set up this podcast thing called Cut The Chat. I used to interview all my actor brethren. So I got Ashley Waters on there. I think I had a Carla. I had Ed Sheeran the day he signed his record deal or something like that. Because I was I used to be close with him back in the day. Did I have Tiny on there? I don't know if I had Tiny. But I was close with all these men. Like, early. This is like... like literally, I knew Ed Sheeran when I met him. Ed Sheeran... When I was 21, mm-hmm. I went to, when the acting work wasn't popping, I went to Edinburgh Festival, Fringe Fest, which is a festival where comedians and actors go on do plays in pubs, in theatres, and da da da. So I did Edinburgh Fringe Festival. I was at one of the big venues and I was doing a play called Somewhere Over the West Way and I was depressed. 
because I was fucking oh, sorry for my language. I don't like I don't like swearing. Do you know what I don't like, I'm a dad man. Like you know like yeah. do you know what I, I like to model like I like to I like Sorry, to I think you might have been influenced by my family. Do you know what? The thing is, I swear and stuff, but I try not to, like, because, again, I'm a Christian. I just come from church. I'm a dad. Like, the, there's there's certain standard that I aspire to, you know? Yeah. Like, like not even because I don't swear. I do swear, but I just try not to. But um, anyway, I'm, a, um, I, I'm at Fringe Festival. I'm handing out flyers for people to come and watch my play because that's what you do. You're on okay. this thing called the Royal Mile. And they're just actors hustling for people to come and see their plays. It's like, I was doing all of that. I'm just like, raw, but I'm just, I'm, my film is number one film in the box office like a week or two weeks ago. I was depressed. I just come out of LSE. My brethren's in 20, 2008 were going on to like 30, 40 grand jobs as their starting salary. Yeah, a lot of my brethren's from uni. And then... I'm in this film that's like the biggest film adulthood at yeah. the time in the country and I'm handing out flyers. Do you know how mad that is? Yeah. And I'm in Edinburgh. Again, there's certain things that humble you. It's like, <laughs> you realise, no, because this, they, all of that is humbling, but on top of that, you realise, even though your film is number one in the UK box office, you're not famous in Scotland, yeah. but you're used to being famous. <laughs> yeah, it's facts. It's facts. So I'm used to being famous, isn't it? Yeah. I'm used to going out and people are like, yeah, you're famous. Let me take pictures with you. Yeah, let me get an autograph. Yeah, oh, come, just have this for free. You know, like, fame gets you mad free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, every item of clothing I'm wearing right now, apart from my socks and boxes, is free. <laughs> <laughs> Fame's wild, right? So, like, you're used to that. Yeah. yeah. And then you're in Edinburgh, no one recognizes you. And do you know, guess who recognized me in Edinburgh? Ed Sheeran. Oh. Just walking Shh. down the street. Oh. Me and my brethren walking down the street. Ed Sheeran stops me. He's going crazy. He's telling me, like, he's some kid, he boss, he's got a show later at some pub. I should come. He's like, you rap as well. Because I used to MC about this. Like, you MC as well. He knew everything about me. Yeah, and he was like, "Come perform." I performed with him. This was before camera phone. I don't have footage. Like it wasn't camera phone was about, but it wasn't. I performed with Ed Sheeran at this pub that night. A few months later, Ed Sheeran moved to London. Links everyone, blah blah. Mm -hmm. And when I'm seeing him doing all of this stuff, when I see him doing stuff with rappers and all of that stuff, now it's not fake because he did it with me, and I wasn't even popping. Yeah, I wasn't even a rapper. Like he was breading me. Like in Ed, like the only person that recognized this was like 2008. I was in I was in at uh was it 2008? Yeah, it must have been 2008. And Ed Sheeran's the only person that recognized me in Edinburgh. Did, you know, like when you just think about how stars are live. I love how you set the That's scene. That's just crazy. Yeah, I love how you, you set could, the scene yeah. there. Like, not not in the best mood in Edinburgh. No one really knows me. All of a sudden, Ed Sheeran. Literally, but then he wasn't Ed Sheeran. He wasn't was Ed Sheeran. Sheeran. He was just a normal okay. guy. Remember, That's remember, what I'm saying. Do, do you remember? This is why you can't care about fame. Why you can't care about fame and why fame is so irrelevant, yeah? Is that, remember, I knew Tiny Temper before Tiny Temper. And yeah. you had Sheeran before Ed Sheeran. Yeah. So, like, you're looking at Ed Sheeran. That's, like, one of the biggest singers in the whole wide world. There was a time he was starstruck by me. Yeah. Fame's a facade. Mad. Fame's a Do you get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So like, if I see Ed now, is he going to style on me? He can't. It's like when I see Richard Blackwood. I can never style on Rich. I can never style on Mega Man. Yeah. I can't style on Asha D. Yeah. You, I wanted to be, there was a time in my life, I was sat in my yard and I was like, I wish I could meet them, man. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I see Asha D now, I'm still that you. I can yeah. never style on Ashley Waters. I can never in my life say anything bad about Ashley Waters. I can never say anything bad about Will Smith. Maybe because of his wife, she's wild. <laughs> I can never say anything about bad about Richard Black because I was a youth man yeah. watching these man thinking, oh my gosh, singled out Richard Blackwood. You gotta go. You don't know this. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I know Richard Blackwood. I don't know. I don't. Richard Blackwood was the big was that Mulder comedian. Yeah. You know, like it was on all the TV programs. Yeah. When I was came from Nigeria, it was Richard Blackwood and Will Smith were and Puff Daddy. Like, I could never style on Puffy. If I ever met Puffy, I might be starstruck. I've never been starstruck by anyone. But you know what? That man, for me, is so aspirational. And I was listening to a podcast yesterday with um, Leo Cohen's um, Drink Champs. 
And he was like talking about the fact that he hated, um, what's their name? Um, Bad Boy, because Bad Boy was very shiny. Mm -hmm. It was bubble gum and it was aspirational. But you know when you're from the hood or like when you just come from Nigeria and all of that? You need to see that. Uh, that's yeah. beautiful, bro. Yeah. You, see, you see what Black Puffy done for black culture globally should never, no one can ever chat to him. Because before Puffy, yeah, yeah. rap was conscious, rap was greasy, mm -hmm. but it was never shiny. He made it shiny. And people have never stopped shiny since. <laughs> it's true. It's true. He's still that guy. Do you get what I'm saying? He made it. He made rap aspirational. He made it like it was shiny. Their videos were literally shining. <laughs> Their clothes were shining. shining. Yeah, it's true. it's true. You know what I mean? He made rap shiny. He made rap champagne. He made it like you know luxury. What can we expect from you next? What is what's what, what's coming? Hmm. What are we waiting on? So I've got. The Intent Free. I've got a film called Clashing. Yeah. Which is set in Jamaica. It's about sound clash culture. Wow. Um, we've got a film called Staycation, which is our next film that's going on The Drop. Okay. Which is our streaming platform, The okay. Drop.movie. What's Staycation? You can find, you can find is, Trapping on there right Which now. is Trapping on there. It's yeah. got me and Nikki... Me and Nikki's platform that we, we want to carry on building. Building, yeah. I've got a few American joints. That's why I've been catching the plane. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, but the deals are slow to make, man. Like, in America, I've got a manager, I've got a lawyer, I've got an agent, oh, so many people. Yeah. And everyone has a say, and it's just, ah. Oh. But this, there's one deal that will very, very, well, like 80% there. And so hopefully we'll be able to close it before the end of the year, write our draft of the script, and hopefully by next year we'll shoot in this movie. Yeah, Fingers lit. crossed. That's lit. By God's that's grace. By God's, God's grace. But you know what? A lot of it is like, you know, by God's grace that I'm here, like, and everything. Yeah. So like, do you know what? Also, and I keep going to the Bible, like, I keep preaching. And I've got my phone now, so I can actually give that verse rather than misquoting the Bible, because I think that's kind of sinful. So what, is Intent Free going to be on Netflix then? I don't know yet because Netflix doesn't own the intent. I own the intent. So the platform depends on us. Okay. Um, so look, it says, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for members of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Oof. Ooh. So like, you're like, that's... Hey, a, that, don't be a wretched man and provide for your family. Yeah, provide for your family. That's powerful. You know, that's deep. That's I've powerful. never it's even seen that. It's in the Bible. That. It's in the Bible. That's like literally, and I'll tell you where it is so like people don't think I'm making it up. It's in First Timothy, verse uh, chapter five, verse eight. I think that's deep. It's simple as well. It doesn't even sound mad biblical. <laughs> it's simple still. That's, it's simple. That's like, it's that like you're an unbeliever. You're worse than an unbeliever. Yeah, yeah. If you don't provide, you're, you're, do you know what I mean? So I mean. as a man, and then I was gonna say, yeah, the reason I don't like to say I'm doing this next year mm -hmm. is like there's a verse like that I love, and I think. I, and again, it's not mad biblical. It's not like you have to go to church and all of that to do all of this. It's very simple again. It's so like it says, come now you who say today or tomorrow we'll go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you, you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or do that. That's what I live by, man. What does that mean? It means that it's by by God's grace. You know, like when people say, inshallah, mm -hmm. that's yeah, what yeah. that it's is. really by God's grace. That's what it is. Yeah. Inshallah is literally by God's it's grace. Grace, yeah. By God's grace, I'm able to do any of these things. Like, But I don't know what tomorrow holds. Oh, you don't know right. what tomorrow holds. Only God. Yeah. And so we can plan all we like. But it's gonna be but by it's, God's grace. But it's whatever God. No, it's not even. Do you it's know what's depending deep? on what He wants? What is that? It says, it says, for you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live, and do this or that. Yeah. Mm. So like, if the Lord wills, you be alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're a you, you, can, you can be here today, be gone you, tomorrow. Yeah, it's, facts. it's like that, bro. And so, like for me, I was like, I could do this film, that film, that this TV show, that did it. It doesn't really matter. Like it's like what God wills, man. Yeah. And so, a lot of the even the greatest things that have happened in my life, like if you look at the journey, like you know, 
like in kiddo, that was my first acting job. Everyone mm. else, like Amel, been acting. He was like one of the. Someone kids. actually asked if he still speaks. Amel, Amel, yeah, I chat to. I chat to everyone, you know. Yeah. I chat to Adam. Yeah. Chat to Amel. Yeah. I've spoken to No Clark, like you know, I've, mm-hmm. everyone. I chat. To, I've got everyone's number, like you know, I reach out to everyone. But mm-hmm. the, the the point is, like you know, ultimately, am I close with these people? No, I'm close with my family. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? But I chat to everyone. I don't I chat to Snakey Man, Arnold, like everyone. Like like everyone's got my number. I speak to everyone. I speak to all even actors that I'm not in films with. Like I chat to Ashley Waters. Mm-hmm. Like I chat to everyone. Everyone that's in the industry, we have a relationship. But the level is, you know. Yeah. No, that's really good to Do you know. get what I'm saying? So yeah. like it's not like even Jamie Winston, like, you know, the girl in it, in yeah. the film. Like, yeah, yeah that's my brethren. Like, they, these are all great people. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So... Well, that's nice like, to hear. But we we have, like, our differences. But mm-hmm. there's nothing that will mean that I won't support, support them. You like, that's whatever. weird. That's just weird. But, yeah, so I've got a relationship with everyone. But ultimately, like, it's, it's all love. Like, it's all blessed. And, like, you know, I just... I'm... In order for me, like, to to be negative or like bad mouth anyone like that would be against what I aspire to. Like I said earlier, I'm a Christian. I don't like swearing. I don't like this. Not saying that I don't do it. Do it, but you, you try not That's to. not what I aspire to. That's yeah. like below how I look at myself as a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. Anyways, um, you know, <laughs> me and, me and, me and, me and GI would like to, you know, star in a film. Maybe one day. What do you want to do? Do you want a bus gun? Like what? Whatever. whatever. <laughs> you know what? I'm from Peckham, you know. Don't tell don't huh? talk to me about busing guy. And I he's in the line. And he asked for Yeah. Where is he? Though? What happened to him? Why didn't he forward? Why didn't he forward? In it, Gio. What are you paying at? Why are you forward? Why are you forward? Man, are lazy. Are you no, I, I think he's. I think he's busy today. I think he's... But yeah, we're open to we're open to everything, and we would love to thank you for coming no, on. You're a legend. You, no, t- you didn't, you didn't just drop game. You gave us the whole PlayStation. Yeah. Oh, like, t- tell him to mention his company. My company is called Fan Studios. Fan so Studios. So that's www.fan-studios.com. So that's Fan Studios. Femi and Nikki Studios. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. And um, also, we're going to, we need you to make the promise. You're coming back to come and do tutorial. Like I'll you do promised it. I'll us. do it. Yeah, Can I get the footage as well? Yeah, of course. If you give me the footage, I'll do it. Of course. 100, 100, 100. We'll, we'll, we'll I'll write talk. the plan. I'll bring my laptop, everything. Yeah? We'll Let's just do talk this. through the presentation. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm lit. down. Yeah, you know? I'm down. That's lit. I'll I'm do down. That's lit. Yeah. A lot yeah, of people, people want to know. know. People don't know. Like, people, people know about music, but people don't know about film. Yeah. People don't know, man. Crazy. See you guys, um, we give you. I just want to remind you guys. You see your other podcast? They're not doing this. This, this right here. What they're is, not what, doing what's this. What's my background? What's my background, by the way? Let me see. Where? Wait. Oh. Oh, your one's um like a a nice. Why is his one like that? Why is my one not like that? Wait, what's my one like? His one's giving grand, uh, house setting. My oh, one's so giving some brick, some brick house. <laughs> Why is my thing a brick house? <laughs> Oh, what? I'm oh sorry? thank you, Gio. Gio said I look lovely. So they, they were offering you 50k. No, 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 no. Else was I wish they would offer me. Oh, wait, wait. Babes. There's a marriage going on in the comments. I, I will receive 50k for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on right now. What are you lot saying? You lot are trying wow. to. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, oh wow, wow, wow. People ooh. are offering. Oh. Wow, wow, ooh. No, I'm, I'm downloading TikTok, man. I need to get TikTok. Please, guys. I don't know. The Mondas are offering money. Why Why not me as well? I don't know. 50K is a lot of money. I'll take it, you know? <laughs> Someone said, thoughts on Scorcher. I That's love Scorcher. It's mad talented. So huh? He <laughs> <laughs> said, chill. chill. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to. Gio's trolling right Gio's now. Gio's trolling, man. Listen, guys. Thank you so much. Thank I'll you. Be back, man. Thank, Thank you. you. It's Thank actually you. been a pleasure having you. I've enjoyed you dropped this. some 
are really amazing gems and we're looking forward to seeing what you also have come in in you know the next the next year even 100%. the next few months because you're always up to something no i've got i've got sorry quickly i've got drunk history black stories coming out on the 26th of october okay and that's with julie adding new guys hosting <gasps> so it's and and it's basically base there's julie's hosting there's a narrator they both get drunk and then the narrator tells Julie a story of a historical figure and basically actors act out the, Stop the it. reenactment. That's it's lit. really sick. That's lit. It's really sick. That's so lit. that's coming and then I've got a screening for it. You guys should come on the... I just come back from Jamaica. You can't say common stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> why? But, but, so why? Every, every time I say that, like, why is ringing in, my head, I'm like, why is ring why? in your head? <laughs> Fire. <laughs> lava, lava, <thing>. lava, <laughs> lava. That's a lava conversation still. <laughs> but yeah, funny. but um, but um, I want you guys to come. So on the 25th, um, I'm gonna send you guys the details. Invite me everywhere. Keep our group. Keep our group. Invite yeah, me yeah. Just keep the group I invite you so Just leave the group there And then I'll make sure I invite everyone To everything right, oh, We appreciate we're there, you man We're there We're there, we're there, we're there. We appreciate we're there. you well, um, well you're welcome back Whenever you want to come back No I'm definitely I'm done This is the closest podcast To my house uh, <laughs> <laughs> See that it's the You closest, lot don't play This is the closest play. one To where I live So yeah Honestly. I was like well Give me 15 minutes notice <laughs> <laughs> Listen. We love it Listen. Thank you once again if you guys are ever short of a host, call me, man. I'll pull up. Oh, hey, that's lit. Are you listening? That's lit. Uh oh. I'll pull up. Tell Gio, like, where's he? Gio, Gio, Gio. Gio. see, look, look. Man's so coming so for your job. Gio, you're bro. done. That's coming for your job. <laughs> it's coming for your job, homie. What? No problem. No problem. No problem. Don't play with us. Don't play with it. Don't, Don't play, play with, with us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for locking in. We appreciate you too because, you know, this wouldn't be as fun without you guys asking your questions. Make sure you come through to the next episode as well so you can ask more questions and find out what what the boys are thinking. Go on, Mimi. Go on, Mimi. Over and out. FYI oh, podcast. Thanks for having me. Bless up. Thank you.